Yo, you tuned in to Gorilla Cross Radio. Broadcasting live from downtown Las Vegas, you're tuned in to Gorilla Cross Radio. Yo, what's up? And welcome to another episode of Unnamed Sports Show right here on Gorilla Cross Radio, streaming live on GorillaCross.com and the Gorilla Cross app. Make sure you download that app for free. You can get that anywhere uh, you get your apps right here. Gorilla Cross Radio. I'm your host, Quan59. Got my man, Death Star Dave, in the building. What's good? Man, happy to be here. Just even with very few sports things going on at the moment, there's always a lot going on. Yeah, always a lot. There's always something going on. The Giants aren't trash right now. Well, we'll talk about that. There's still there's still 16 games back at the Dodgers, but but hey, they might be able to sneak in. Uh, That's all you want, right, Dave? I don't know what I want because the problem is they're not good enough to actually do anything, and they're like they're punching way above their weight right now. So I'm. But it's not like the NBA where you get good draft picks if you tank. Yeah, it's true but at the same time they're this is also keeping them holding on to guys like Bumgarner who are big trade bait right now yeah especially since he's pitching well again it's it's tough because if you hang in this race long enough are they not gonna deal people yeah and I think they have to make deals because like I said even though they're only two and a half out of the coming into today out of the wild card spot in the National League the wild card in the National League is trash they're a 500 team and they're only a 500 team because they've been incredibly hot this month. So we'll talk about that Ooh. and some more today. Uh, we got a live phone interview with Oday Osborne, uh, one of the newest UFC fighters, won a contract last Tuesday on Dana White's Contender Series. So we're going to be talking to him about his fight and what he expects to do now that he's in the UFC. Uh, so we're excited to talk to him today. So we're going to get live on the line with him in about 15 minutes. Uh, he'll be calling in, so we'll be getting on with that. We got a little bit of NBA news to talk about today as well. Uh, U- USA basketball. We're going to talk about some people dropping out. Uh, and there was a big fight this weekend, man. There was actually a lot of good fights in UFC and boxing. Uh, but we're going to talk about that. Pacquiao versus Thurman. Really good fight. Was Thurman ready for this after, you know, coming off an injury, being out for a while? Um what do you guys think about Pacquiao, 40 years old, is a champion? So we're going to talk about that uh, today right here on Unnamed Sports Show. Please share the live feed if you're watching the live feed. Uh, follow us Thanks. at Gorilla Cross on all social media. And we are here live for the next hour, hour and a half. Uh, hit us up, 702-608-3259. Give us your opinion on what we're talking about today. Uh, we're going to jump into it, man. I want to jump into some NBA real quick. Always. I'm always happy to do this. You you found the right person to talk to about this. <laughs> uh, I'm going to jump into some Spurs news. Your boy Tim Duncan is back. Do you think this is a good move? He is an assistant coach under Greg Popovich. Popovich said something like, well, I was your assistant for 19 years, so uh, it, it's good that you're returning the favor finally. <laughs> uh, is it, is this a funny. good deal for the Spurs? I, I didn't think Tim Duncan would be the type to return to the NBA this quick, first of all. Um, but I thought once he retired, he's such a low-key guy. 
I thought he was just going to like do something totally different than be a, a coach or be affiliated. Now, I, I don't see him being an assistant or any kind of coach anywhere else unless he oh, falls no. in love with it. But I think he just misses being around the Spurs organization. And that's what this is. Well, especially when you see the Spurs, you hear all these stories with like former players, even guys like Steve Kerr that are found coaching success with other teams or all these other things. It's like if they're in town, it's like, oh, I have to go have dinner with Pop. It's like they all still get together. So it, I think there's something to that. Even being a low key guy, I think he probably yeah. misses that. I mean, especially when you consider how long he, um, how long he was in that organization and how long he was playing basketball, and to just go from that locker room situation from four years of college to a near twenty year career, yeah, it's. I would have to imagine that's got to be near impossible to just go all the way away, especially when somebody like him that has so much to offer yeah i mean i can't imagine that he but you're right he played that that's what people forget i think uh we see a lot of people not even get close to 19 years in the nba uh and he played was it 19 or uh, I, I think it 18, was 19. 19 uh but he played four years in college which people forget that that was a thing back then playing four years in college uh so he's been playing for a long time because most of these players you see now with 15 16 year careers they weren't. They didn't play college. LeBron never no. played college, so he had four extra years. Or they do the six in the NBA. Run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Zion run, the yeah. the Ben Simmons. Uh, so I mean, I, I give him props for that. Uh, but yeah, he, I mean, he's a spur again. I know people in the Spurs Spurs organization are happy about that. Uh, like I said, I don't think this leads him to be a head coach unless he totally falls in love with it, which I don't see him doing that. I think it is more of a just be back around the Spurs type thing. I, that that feels right, but I mean, I think of all the all-time greats, he has the kind of profile and demeanor that I think would lend itself to being a good coach. Because I think a lot of these guys, when you look at like Michael Jordan, could never be a coach. Yeah, clearly Magic couldn't be a coach either. I mean, Isaiah Thomas couldn't be a coach. I mean, a lot of these guys, it's it's so tough. Like Kobe could never be a coach. You can't you can't, especially the guys who are just outrageously physically gifted. Yeah. I don't think you could ever, like, how could Michael Jordan ever just be like, or say LeBron James in the future? How how could it be like, where he's instead of being the player coach that he is, to be just an actual coach that's not playing and just be like, okay, uh, we don't really have any plays, so everything runs through you and just yeah. just physically dominate everyone with the with the greatest skill set that anyone's ever been given. You can't do that. It's I think it's too hard. The only I mean, the only truly great player that ha ever succeeded as a coach was, I mean, in 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 our in our years, is Larry Bird. Yeah. And really, if you look at it, it's as because he's a great player. Yeah. Yeah. It, he deferred. He he you had, had Bill Russell back in the day, who was a player coach and won the championship. Yeah, I'm, I'm not talking about back in in the in those <laughs> days like that when there was five teams. But you know, I mean, I guess you could say whatever you want about Lenny Wilkins too. But I mean, I, Lenny Wilkins was a good player. Larry Bird was a truly great yeah. player, and to, he also had like an offensive and defensive coordinator, and gave up a lot of the responsibilities and was just kind of like CEO because he knew. Yeah, and, and I think a lot of players that try to coach don't know that because uh, well, you you saw Isaiah try to have way too much power, and, and you know his ego was so big that I think he could be a good coach, but as far as you know, the, their ego is getting away because right. they were such great players. It is hard to coach people that. You're not that good. So how, you know, I'm and, trying to push greatness into you and tough. you don't have that in you. I think that's what's, yeah. I think that's what's really tough is just to be able to relate to non-superstars, to guys who can't just take over entire games, seasons, leagues. I mean, you're talking about the truly greatest of the great players. I don't think you, I don't think you can ever communicate that. Yeah. Whereas I think Tim Duncan can communicate a lot, but I, 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 can't imagine him being a head coach. It should, that would just seem weird. Like yeah. what he's coming back to do, that makes a lot of sense to me. But him go, leave, him becoming a head coach of another team, it would seem strange to me. I just couldn't see him doing it. Yeah. The big fundam fundamental. Uh, all right, moving on. More NBA. Uh, we talked about this uh, a few weeks ago, and actually it's back up. Uh, Wizards offered Bradley Beal a three-year Hundred eleven million dollar extension. Well, do you think he they're takes about that? To. He, they can't technically do it, but it's just basically like the moment he can sign it, which yeah. I believe is Friday. 
Um, do you think he takes it? Because I'm not sure if he's happy there. Uh, I, I think they have to extend this to him because he is their best player. John course, Wall, we don't know if, if he does come back, what he'll be, because he wasn't that great before I think he was better injuries. than John Wall already anyway. Yeah. Personally, I know Wizards fans would probably disagree with that, but... I'm not sure now. Well, now they definitely would. I'm wouldn't. not sure now. But I mean, I, I think at the time, <laughs> they, they were better, definitely yeah. disagreeing. But I guess it would really depend on... What are you, what what do you love about that organization? They basically just made Shepard GM by default. You don't have which with, with that shouldn't they have just done that at the beginning if they were, I, if that was going to be the hire because it would have. I don't think they thought that was going to be the hire. I think they thought yeah. they were going to roll out stuff to other people, and I think any of your big name guys that they were going after are like. And I only heard Masai. I didn't really hear any other. Masai names. seemed to be the biggest one that they keyed on. I know that they were trying to go after like some of the assistants in places like Denver, but it just, it really seemed like, I don't know. When you look at that job, it's like, okay, well, I can't do anything in that job for at least four years yeah, because I'm not getting off John Wall's money. That's there. There's just no possible way that happens. Be, so I'm stuck with paying John Wall top, 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 beyond top dollar. If I'm lucky, I pay Bradley Beal a ton of money also but then that means I can't go get anybody else. Yeah. Who nobody's coming to play with John Wall. And realistically, with Bradley Beal, no matter what you sign him for, like I said, a lot of the question becomes if if Bradley Beal loves it there, then maybe, but he could still turn around and ask for a trade the next day. So that's that's where you're I think that's your biggest risk now is yeah. none of this really matters. Like I was thinking about NBA over unders. It's like, well, we even with all that's happened. I, I mean, I think I'm going to be stuck with watching Chris Paul on the Thunder, but I'm not sure. And the same thing with Bradley Beal. It's like, okay, are you sure he wants, even if he re-signs, are you sure that there's still not a trade coming? Yeah. And then, because yeah, we saw Paul George re-sign, uh, you know, si- sign with OKC and ask for a trade a year later. So, I mean, uh, and Adam Silver said they want to change that. I don't think there's anything anything they can do about that in the new CBA that's coming up or whatever. I, I mean, how can you force people to say, to to not say they want to be traded? All teams have to do is not trade you. It's not like, you know, we talked about it. It's and not that's like the big thing. It's not like Oklahoma city had to trade Paul George and Russell Westbrook. I personally think it was a year too early. I think they could have given it another year with them being healthy. I don't disagree. They could have made a run, but, but man, that was a, that was quite the trade deal. It was, but at the same time, we talked about this last week. They gave up, you know, they got a lot of picks, but Russell Westbrook was one of, you know, are you not, are you not finding the Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, James Harden? You might, maybe, find one of them. The You're chance, not finding three of them. The chance of drafting MVPs in three consecutive years is, uh, I would say, next to impossible. <laughs> I so think there's I a better chance of raiding area, area 51. Yeah. No, well, that. there's a much better chance of, of that nonsense than, yeah. but there, there's, there's no chance of that, but you still, you set your franchise up to be as good as it possibly can be going forward. Because realistically, as much as I hated to say it, but I feel like they had like, especially they, with Golden State, with continuity, they could have been a decent team. I, I think if because health, everybody's a two, two team player now. Yeah. That's, and, and OKC would have been it, in, I mean, we don't know. Because if Kawhi would have went to the Lakers, we, we talk about that. If they didn't make that Paul George trade, where does he end up going? See, I think But he, I think he still would have been a clipper. I think he was I think clearly from how he played it, which is funny to me, and I'm sure we'll talk about uh, the Lakers complaining about how he played it. It's like I don't do you I'm sorry, you I know you're a Laker fan. I know many other people out there are. Are we supposed to feel bad for the Lakers? No. And I, <laughs> it, I, I think they I don't think they should have mentioned anything about feeling bad in any way either well and think about it this way they only got lebron james because they're lakers it's not because they were a good organization that was going somewhere yeah. really because he didn't care about the young players that they were building obviously up. clearly he <laughs> he wanted them gone so none of that seemed to matter they clearly had organizational dysfunction clearly yet lebron james still goes there and with lebron james going there that causes well i don't think the dysfunction was there when he went there though I think that's when the changes were made. Everything seemed good when he went there last summer. But I think the fact that they... They still paid KCP all that money. Well, so, I mean, I they mean, pay, they paid him to be able to talk to Rich Paul. Of course. We know that. But 
well, in this year, I don't know. Yeah, that, I don't know that's, why they paid that's him why I'm wondering. It's like, but the thing is, Rich Paul's an agent. You could have talked to him at any point. And could've. who were they bidding against for KCP? Yeah. But here, here's the thing. Like, Lakers know all NBA teams, of course, you're getting played. Like, someone is getting played in in negotiations, whether it be intentionally or not. Like, if if a player's talking to four or five teams, only one team's getting them. So, of course, of course they're trying to build leverage. And guess what? Maybe if Lakers played their cards right, he, they could have built the leverage and he could have played the other teams and went to them or whatever. But he chose the Clippers. Why would he want to play with LeBron James? You know, he wants to build his own legacy. It makes sense. As a Laker fan, I wasn't mad at him signing to the Clippers at all. And does he want the it, it makes the NBA better. It makes the whole fake uh, rivalry between Lakers and Clippers actually something for the next three or four years at least. Maybe. Well, I mean, we'll see if Anth- what happens with Anthony Davis. They're, they're only guaranteed, to, him and Paul George are only guaranteed to be Clippers for two years. Well, that too. But at the same time, at least like right now, we can say, that that's an interesting, oh, uh, of course. you know, Lakers Clippers could be Western Conference Finals. They've never met in the playoffs ever. So no, that, and that's it, mostly due to the Clippers not usually being yeah. good. But even when they've been in the playoffs, they've just never met. Which so the NBA as a whole is going to be a lot better to watch this season. I think it's going to be fun. I think this is the first season in a long time where we could say we don't know who the best team is. I know a lot oh, of no people way. are trying to give it to the Clippers. You've never seen them play together. We don't know what Paul George is going to be like coming off double shoulder surgery. They're not going to have the best record, I can tell you that. Because Kawhi Probably, is not I mean, playing They a bunch never of... play more than... 74 games is his most ever. He's not playing that many. 60 games is how much he played last year. He's going to have to play more than that in the West. He's, would... going, to have to, he's going to have to get 70 games. I, I can't see him sitting out 22 games. In the West. You don't think he can maybe play 65 games? Uh, possibly. I think that's very dangerous, though. But seven, Because you, ha- you, you have a, a Golden State team that a lot of people are throwing out of the playoffs that Steph Curry is going to average 35 a game. I, I'm putting that out there right now, at least 35 a game. He's going to have to. They made a lot of sneaky, good-for-them pickups, like guys where it's like... And they have D'Angelo that they, he, they can trade him for two or three good players to fill out that roster if he doesn't work out. Yeah, and, and the thing is, he, D'Angelo is going to get every chance to work out. Yeah. He's he's going to be in the best situation he's ever been in in his life. But they're they're throwing Golden State out. So that's that's a team that, listen, that. they're going to they're gonna be in the playoffs. I, I, I'm, I'm not putting them out of the playoffs, but a lot of people are. Uh, Did we learn nothing from Rudy T.? But but the fact that you, you you just can't miss games in the West like that. I mean, we we saw that with LeBron. He he played fifty five games. They were fourth best record in the in the West. Uh, when he went out, they ended up dropping all the way. All the trade rumors stuff like that happened. Uh, they weren't able to recover. If if anybody in the West misses significant time, that that team could fall all the way out of the playoffs. I mean, we saw that with Houston last year. If it wasn't for James Harden having an amazing, crazy year with all the injuries they had, they could have easily not even been in the playoffs. Oh, the the way he was playing, because, I mean, he was having sometimes where he was scoring 40-plus and the, he was getting zero 50 help. 50-plus. Yeah. So 60. It's, so my... Uh, the, I, I'm not ready to say that Oklahoma City is guaranteed not a playoff team. I'm definitely... Well, I'm, I'm Guaranteed out? I don't think they're a playoff team, personally. Especially as a Thunder fan, I I think the West is too difficult. In the East, they'd be a I think they'd be a definite playoff team. But just looking at and looking at that, because you look at their roster, it's like their roster's not terrible. They have they have a fair they have competent NBA players. Chris Paul and one thing that you're gonna say is through all this, even though they're not gonna be able to deal Chris Paul, Chris Paul's not gonna quit. I don't like Chris Paul. But I doubt he's going to quit. Is he going to get hurt? He might coast, though. I'm, I'm not sure how hard he's going to play. Uh, we'll see. I mean, listen, man. I I don't hate Chris Paul. I've hated him. Oh, I, don't, I definitely I don't, don't like Chris I, Paul. I don't hate him, but uh, I would like to see him have a good year. Just to kind of even prove like the people wrong in Houston that act like he's just totally done. I'd love to see him have a good year so he could possibly get moved. Because the as of right now, I can't imagine how they're moving him. And clearly from all their statements and the fact that them and Chris Paul's people have kind of realized like, oh, okay, yeah, we're probably not going to be able to move you. That's yeah. that's why they did the Russ deal for him, I think, because 
I don't think they were getting enough back for us. And getting Chris Paul back, they were like, well, if we make some for Chris Paul, we make some for Chris Paul. If not, we have Chris Paul to offset the money. So, yeah. and what, and one less year. And they so. still got, yeah, less year got money back or uh, tra- picks back with yeah. all that. So, yeah, man. I mean, listen, I'm I'm excited about this NBA season. Uh, obviously, we're talking about it at the end of last season already. Uh, we're already talking about next season. So, uh, well, the players clearly from seeing all the Team USA stuff, they're they're all thinking about next season too. And I think they have to. And we're going to get into the Team USA stuff in a minute. Uh, but we are going to get live on the line with Oday Osborne, uh, the newest UFC fighter. He won a contract last uh, last week on Dana White's Contender Series. And Dave, you you watched the fight, man. Uh, what, what what do you think about this guy? Man, first off, insanely long arms, <laughs> set seventy three inch arms on a five seven guy. Uh, second, I just saw a lot of different, a, a varying amount of skills. His striking was was beyond competent. He hit some very accurate shots against clearly a very tough fighter, and just just his ability to catch submissions too. So I, he seems very well-rounded. I, I, I'm not sure how he has seeing him fight like this. I'm not sure how that tells you he's had tough fights early. Cause I'm not sure how he has losses this early shows you in this sport. You never know because I, what I saw from him was just he, the contract to, to I mean, I'm no expert. The contract to me seemed like a no brainer by seeing him oh, fight yeah, because just, his reach, his skill level already, which is only going to improve with more time, a wrestling background, but being able to throw accurate strikes and catch submissions. And his, his reach is ridiculous. I mean, I think he was the shorter of the two fighters, and his reach was like oh yeah, he four was, or five inches more. Oh, it, was, it was more than that. His, his reach was like seven or eight inches longer. Yeah, ridiculous. I mean, super long arms. Uh, really good fighter, man. It's been interesting going to the uh, contender series every week and, and getting to see up and coming fighters and, and just seeing how many people are, are living this dream and, and, and trying to get into the UFC and how many good fighters there are that aren't even in the UFC right now. You That's, know, UFC is obviously the ultimate spot to be in, but there's some really good fighters out there that, I mean, who knows three or four years, these guys might be champions, might be the stars we're talking about of the future, you know? You have no idea. That's 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 what makes the sport so interesting to watch is just, and that's why, unlike boxing, it's like, it doesn't feel like the undercard is a waste. Yeah. Like in boxing, it's like, yeah, that's of course where young guys come up, but you don't notice that nobody shows up. You don't have to pay attention. It's like the undercard doesn't seem to mean that much. But with, and with sometimes under- they're not very good fights. I mean, sometimes you do get good undercard fights, but in UFC, undercard fights are good fights. They're up and comers that might be contenders in a year. And it's not just these guys can the young guys continuing to get better and gain more skill. It's just the fact that you all of a sudden you're just done yeah. in this sport. Sometimes, like some guys can refigure it out and and hang on, but some people are. I mean, Ronda Rousey is probably the perfect example of that. Yeah. Ronda Rousey was unbeatable. Two fights later, you couldn't imagine her fighting again. That's and, insanity. And now you can even take uh, Prime Ronda, and you can't really imagine her fighting with Prime Nunes. You know, I mean, I, I think the sport for women has evolved so much in the UFC. I mean, so quick. Ronda is still new. You know, what I'm saying she she has wasn't around that long. No, she she her, came in like a like a comet. It like was Misha Tate. I can't imagine her trying to fight the top women now, you know what I'm saying? Well, we, which we, I, and I loved her back in the day, but I mean, we saw her fight Nunez and, and she had, she, and she knew Misha Tate is a smart fighter. You could hear all the commentary. She understands the sport. Yeah. She knew when she fought Nunez, I mean, all due respect to Misha Tate, who was actually a great fighter. She just, she always had problems with Rousey. That yeah. was, that was her problem. But then she fought Nunez as Nunez was coming up and that was that. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing with the women's division. It's, it's grown so quick, so fast, and these women are so much better than they were three or four years ago that it's hard to even see someone like Ronda doing what she did. Even though I, I think the biggest takeaway from Ronda is she stopped fighting. She, she, she was trying striking. to strike. She was trying to strike, and it didn't work like that. Uh, you know, who but could say? <laughs> it is what it is. 
There's some great fights. There's actually a, a Cyborg is fighting this week against Spencer, who's undefeated. Uh, I think this is her first UFC fight, though. Yeah, it's, that's that's the one thing you always have to wonder about is because we just we don't know some of the some of the smaller organizations out there are producing great fighters. Some are just producing okay fighters, yeah. and some are keeping guys fighting longer than they probably should. So yep. you you really have to come into the biggest organization to really know. Exactly. Exactly. So we do got one of the newest UFC fighters. I know he's hyped up. I know I'm hyped up, man, because I really did enjoy watching him fight and just, uh, you know, seeing the, the post-fight interview with Laura and then the post-conference, uh, post-fight news conference uh, with us. Uh, my man O'Day Osborne live on the line right now. How you doing, bro? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing good, man. Just, you know, trying to ride this wave right now and then come through with, the, with these UFC wins. <laughs> a, a week later, man. How does it feel? Are you still on cloud nine and, and are you ready to go? Man, you know what? Uh, I think that first night I was on cloud nine and then the day I was on cloud like five. But <laughs> since then, everything's just been normal for me, man, to be honest, because this has always been a dream of mine. Yeah. So when you have a dream, when you, um, for instance, right, if if you... Usually people that are successful, they intend to be successful, right? Um, if you want to make a, a, a $10,000 or a thousand, sorry, if you want to make $100,000 in a year um, and you, you, you're surprised that you made $100,000 in a year, that means you, you, you didn't expect to make that $100,000 in that year. I expected this to happen. Yeah. So, I, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, pretty, uh, I'm pretty calm about it. Um, not I don't the right word to say, not calm, but it's not really like, like I'm like, oh man, because I, I don't feel like I made it yet. You know what I mean? I'm, in my mind, I feel like, like I, I need to accomplish some stuff. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, so, it's, it sounds like you have the right mindset to where that's not, making the UFC isn't the goal. Succeeding it, no, there is the goal. Uh, yeah. Exactly. And um, that's, that's the, that's the way you got to look at it because I've always, since, like, since I was a kid, man, I've always, like, just dreamed of being something great, and I've never known what it was, but when I figured out that it was supposed to be the UFC, I've always told myself every single day, like, I'm going to be a UFC champion. I'm going to be a UFC champion. I'm going to be a UFC champion. So finally, when I finally got into the UFC, it was like, man, yeah, that's cool. I'm in the UFC, but I wasn't as, I, you know, I'm not, like, as hyped as usually people are, because I've, I've always said that I want to be a UFC champion. Like, this is, you know what I'm saying? Like, I thought that I was going to be here, but this is, this is really not, I didn't do all this work just to be here. And you hear a lot of people say the same thing, but I feel like I hear a little more out of you with your, uh, you know, just the way you're talking about it. Cause everybody that wins is like, Oh, I want to be a champion, but you can tell that their goal was to get to the UFC. Like their dream yeah. might to be the champion, but I'm not sure if that's necessarily their goal. You know, and, and with with you, it exactly. sounds like that's really like, OK, you're happy to be here. But listen, I already knew I was going to be here. So this is just the next step for me to be able to get to just, where I want to get. Exa exactly, man. Exactly. And that's why my, my mindset's always been like, because I've always been a competitor, man. Even yeah. in high school when I wrestled. In high school, I wrestled. You know, I, I was the only kid to place uh, three times in my high school. That, that doesn't that, that don't mean nothing. But the point my point I'm trying to make is, you know, my, the highest. I placed was fourth at state. And if I made it, if I, if my goal was, Oh, I, I got to get to state. I would have never placed fourth. My goal was always to be a state champion. I started, I only started wrestling my, my freshman year. So I started my freshman year, my sophomore year, I placed sixth. junior year. I placed uh, fifth and then senior year. I placed fourth, but my goal ever since I started wrestling my freshman year was to be a state champion. And when I, when I, when I made it to state, I was like, all right, that's cool, but we got we got work to do. Yeah, you know, and that's my mindset right now. I'm like, that's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm in the UFC, but we got work to do. A lion wakes up every day at you know early. Like, listen, we, it's time to hunt. We got work to do. And that's that's always. I've been through so much in my life that like I'm like, nah, uh, we got work to do now. And now it's even more work because now that you're in the UFC, as quick as you got in. You could be out just like that if, yeah. if you're not fighting right, if you're just not like winning that. these fights, if you're just happy being there and you're not focused on those fights, 
you know, you could be right back out, you know, doing doing whatever you were doing before. Uh, so what is that like? What's your preparation like knowing that now I got to prepare even harder than I did before because now I'm trying to be the champion in the UFC? Um, for me, getting rid of all the outside noise. So anybody that is constant, like that's feeding your ego, right? Uh, that's cool. You know, I love my fans. I love the people that support me. But at the end of the day, um, you know what I mean? I only follow one true God and that's it. And I think your biggest people's biggest downfall is can be all the, the hype, you know what I mean? Yeah. And letting it get to your head and letting it think, you know, letting it like you, I think, you know, let, let it be that like, Oh man, I'm the greatest. Yeah. And you know, that, that surely can slowly be your greatest downfall. So for me, it just let tune in all that out and just focusing on, me, myself, God, and fighting, and what I'm fighting for, my kids and the school, all that stuff, because um, if, you, if you let anything get to you too much, it becomes pressure, right? Yeah. I think a lot, of, a, lot of chance, a lot of cases, people lose or they, they lose focus because of all the pressure, right? And you ever notice people say when they get done fighting, a lot of people always say, man, I feel like I just let everybody down. That's the worst thing anyone could say because that means you weren't fighting for yourself. So the yeah, biggest big. preparation for me is, is mental. Uh, mental preparation is always key and always making sure that I'm staying, I'm remaining humble and I'm fighting for myself. Um, There's a difference between being confident and being humble. I am very confident. That's why I call myself Picasso. It's not a cocky thing, you know what I'm saying? It's just I believe that I can do whatever I want to do because that's what I believe. I'm, um, I've been through this a lot where I've lost on national TV on a smaller league like RFA, which is now LFA. And, you know, I, I uttered those words, man. When I lost, I was all in the hype. And I was like, man, I feel like I let everybody down. And, I was, and, that, and that was like a wake-up call for me. And that's, oh. that's when I knew. That's when I knew, like, man, okay, this is where I'm at right now. And I, I, I took that loss. And I, let, I, I really made me who I am today, man. I'm glad I had that loss. I'm, I really am glad. Um, I, I don't, I'd rather, way rather lose on that smaller stage and learn from my, my losses and what I was fighting for than, than here on the big stage. Now I can uh, put everything into a, a lens. Uh, I can put everything to a filter. You know what I'm saying? Uh, now, Ode, I had a couple of quick questions regarding fighters specifically. Um, first one would be, who was the fighter that, that most inspired you or got you the most into the game who who was who was that one person for you because everybody kind of has in every sport kind of their like that guiding yeah. star like that that's like that's my guy this is who this is who i'm oh. following in there most definitely i'll just say anderson silva for sure 100 percent. nice um when i first started actually because i grew up in florida so you know you know i was born in jamaica obviously and i grew up in florida so actually i first started watching um Believe it or not, I first started watching Kimbo Slice because Kimbo Slice was from Miami. Right. And at the time, like YouTube was blowing up in Florida. You know, YouTube, you gotta watch out, watch out, watch this dude, Kimbo Slice, backyard fighting. And that was the huge, that was a huge thing. I was in the seventh grade watching <laughs> Kimbo Slice. No, no joke. Like Kimbo Slice in the seventh grade, like backyard fighting. Yeah. I was like, man, this is legit. Like I want to, like, like I thought, you know, I, I thought it was cool because in my heart, I always felt like I was a warrior, right? And I was like, man. I want to do this backyard fighting, you know, <laughs> as crazy as it sounds, man. Like I was like, man, this, this is what I want to do. Some, some backyard fighting. So then it, it opened up the gates and the, the door for the UFC. And I started not UFC. I think it was pride uh, or it might've been, but I started watching, um, Anderson Silva was the first guy that got my attention. I was like, man, this guy is slick. He yeah. like slicker than a snicker. I like this dude is, is mad slick. So I, I you know, I, um, he was the first fighter who really like inspired me. I was like, wow, it's so, I didn't see a fighter. I saw a martial artist. I was like, what he's doing is just so, it's so articulate. He, he's so, um, like, he's like an artist. Like he was just like flowing and it was just so beautiful to me. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, um, it, it was, it was just, just such a beautiful thing watching Anderson Silva fight. It was just like true art. Well, especially when he was untouchable and he Gosh. could just put put his hands down and dodge people every attack. He just toy with people like it was nothing. But it's so funny because that's my, it's hilarious because I didn't plan to fight 
like Anderson Silva, but that is my fight. If you go back and watch my fights, that's accurately my fight style. Like if all of my fights, um, usually my hands are, are pretty low and I, I didn't plan. I didn't, you know what I mean? When I was at Rubis Sport, um, you know, they had me with, in a traditional fight stand, you know, with my hands high. Cause I, the first gym I was at, um, my trainer, like literally knew, I don't know how he knew, but he just knew that I didn't like my, having my hands up. And like, I, I did it anyways. And then one fight, it was, I was amateur, man. One fight, I just dropped my hands. I was like, I can't do this. I just dropped my hands. <laughs> and, I, and because my, for me, um, being a fighter, I'm very instinctual, right? And I understand why Anderson Silva does it now. Being a fighter that does the same thing, it's, it's, I'm an instinctual fighter. Um, for me, my reflexes of pulling is so much quicker when my hands are down. Because if you think about the physical um, attribute of lifting your hands up, right? If you lift your hands up in a fight, your shoulders are, are typically going to be more tense. So your pull game and your slip game, is, is, it's, it's not gonna, for me, it's not going to be as strong. Because everything I rely on is my reflexes. My reflexes just react so much quicker when my hands are low. Yeah, I know the the um, you know the, the thing of it is you can get clipped. I already weigh those options, but I trust my instinct and I use it actually as bait. I use my hands being low as a as a bait to to pull you in. So it's a game of chess. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm hitting the, the checkmate right before I sacrifice that pawn. Already in my head, I've weighed every single variable of what could go wrong. So if I get caught, I'm never going to be shot. So like, yeah. oh, man, I'm so surprised I got knocked out. Like, no, nah, of course, I, you know, I know that's a possibility that can happen. You know, um, I think in a lot of cases, most fighters don't plan to get hit. Uh, I think uh, uh, um, the biggest mistake a lot of fighters make is that no one plans to get hit. What I mean, what I mean is people get hit, right? They tense up. Um, I actually sometimes will plan on if, okay, I'm going to come in. If I get hit, I have to go with this punch. So I lean away from the punch. So I absorb, you know, four sequels speed times mass. So you, you kind of go with it a little bit and you take the punch just a little, you, but you also are taking that that force away and you can return five or six combinations. So it's a, it's a, it's a dangerous game, man. <laughs> but it's, huh. it's fun. I love it. I love it. Well, it's, I think it's, it's fun. It's a fun. It <clears throat> seems like you, you get helped out by that insanely long reach for your height. That, that we were looking at that reach. We were just talking about a Ridiculous, second ago. Yeah. It is insane. So do you think that, that <laughs> yeah. do you think that helps you be able to recover somewhat a little bit faster because that you almost have like leg distance with, with arms? So guys yeah, can't, it, guys it can't run in <laughs> pretty much. No, it, yeah, it does. And that's what, and there's some, and it's crazy because, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to give a little bit of my secret out right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really care because <laughs> no one can stop it, but there's something I do where, um, I'll, if you watch my fight, I'll lean in a little, I'll lean in. So what I'll do is I'll plant that, I'll plant my back foot and I'll lean in. So it makes, it's a perception game. It makes me seem like I'm a little closer than I actually am. So I'll plant my back foot and I'll lean a little closer. So it makes me seem like I'm closer and that you can't hit me. But actually in reality, all I gotta do is just drop my back foot back a little bit and you're just outside of my reach where I can punch you and you can't. So wow. as soon as they engage, I just drop that back foot back just a little bit and it, it just, I, every punch misses. Now, if they have a, a bigger, um, a longer reach, then I drop my back foot back and I can lean back. So it, it enhances my ability to lean. I still can hit you where you can't hit me. So yeah, having that reach definitely, um, definitely helps. It also seems to definitely help you helps. throw up from some crazy angles too. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. It does. And I even noticed but how you... Ha ha Go ahead. Okay. No, no. I was just saying... That's the thing. Um, fighting is it's, it's an art, man. If you overcomplicate everything and you overthink all these techniques where you're doing like a jab, a cross, a hook, a punch, a kick, everything can't be perfect. You know what I'm saying? It cannot be perfect. Everything, if, if, you, if you make everything so perfect, you're going to get clipped because you're going to get, you're going to face the per, you're going to face that one person that does something unorthodox 
and rock you. Yeah. So nothing, not you have to, you can't expect anything. You got to go in there and just let your uh, innate abilities take over. And let, let's talk about this fight with Via Real uh, that that actually got you the contract on Dana White's Contender Series <laughs> out here in Las Vegas. Uh, really good fight, man. I mean, right from the start, uh, you ha- you got some good hits in right away, super quick, uh, super strategic. You could tell. And then he got on top of you. Do, are you worried at all as a fighter when, when it seems like he, he just kind of reversed the advantage? Um, and then it just ended. Like when I was watching it live, we were sitting there. We didn't know what happened. We're like, wait, who tapped out? Like what happened? Why'd the, stop, why'd the fight stop? And then we saw the replay. We saw you, you get his arm. And, you know, he, he gave up quick after that because you could tell he, he couldn't do anything with it. And uh, they called it a verbal yeah. tap out. Uh, so what was that like? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, man. He, he, first he screamed, like he was like, ah, and then he said, tap, 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 tap. You know what I mean? So I, and I felt, I felt his elbow kind of, his, uh, I, I felt his elbow pop. Uh, a little bit. That's like, tough for me. <laughs> so I knew, so I was like, all right, you know, I, I just, I let it go. Because I thought I literally, and the, I knew the ref heard it because it was loud. He was like, tap, tap, tap. And he said, ah. So I, you know, I, I knew it. He was kind of, you know, kind of going to be in a little pain a little, a little later. But, um, Usually when that happens, man, I think there is a sense of calmness that you have to have. And being a wrestler, um, I, I was a, um, a high school and college wrestler who came from behind before. And if you don't have that calmness and believe that you can come from behind or put your, you know, believe that in your abilities to, to be good in every position, it's a... <clears throat> It's, it's almost a, a mindset thing. You got to elevate yourself to a level of, I have to be able to crush this person from every single position, yeah. right? I, I picture myself up there with the UFC champion because you can't, for me, and like I said, it's not a, a cocky thing. It's, if if you, you put yourself on the same level, you're just going to achieve that. You know, you're, you're yeah. going to barely, barely pass. It's like, uh, barely studying for a test, right? So for me, I had to elevate my mind so high, so high that everything is just obliteration, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. So any position that I'm in, I'm thinking just obliteration. Okay, now I'm here. Obliteration. Um, every we all have that dragon in our head, that 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 demon in our head that tells us that we can't do. Oh man, you're here now. You're in a bad. You're in a bad spot. Okay, you just took a punch. That hurts. What are you gonna do? You know what I'm saying? Now, yep. when you when you you, you as a person, we got to find the demon, and you have to build yourself up, your confidence up so high that everything becomes obliteration. So when you get into a bad spot, instead of you, that that thing in your head being like, "All right, you're in a bad spot," have that thing in your head be like, "You good, man? You want to pull this out? Let's 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 get this. Let's get the sub." Um, you took a punch, like, man, that didn't even hurt. Come yeah. on, let's get this going. You know what I'm saying? You have to have that, like, that boom, 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 that check, check, let's go, let's go, let's go. That get it, like, wake up as a lion, hunt, boom, boom, boom. You know what I'm Every, uh, Eric Thomas made this statement. Eric, uh, he said, everybody want to be a beast until it's time to do what beasts do. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so that's the mindset I, I literally have all the time, man. I always have that mindset when I'm in a bad spot. It's not for me. It's not a bad spot. I'm just in a different spot. It's martial arts. I I, I put myself in. Okay, I'm in a different situation now. Let's get this going from a different situation. And you are good at a lot of things. And I think now to be a champion in the UFC, it's not like back in the day where you could have one specialty and, and, and you can just dominate in that and win. You you pretty much have to have yeah. everything. Uh, in yeah, 2019 yeah, well, in the UFC, you have to you have to have it all <laughs> to be a champion. And I think you have that, man. I really do. Uh, I, I, I love man, your confidence. You. I yeah, I love your thank confidence, you. and, and it doesn't come off as arrogance, uh, which is fine too in the UFC. I mean, if you're arrogant, be arrogant. Yeah. But but it really does seem yeah, confident, yeah. and you know where you, where you want to go and, and what it takes to get there. Oh yeah, most doubt, man. Um, honestly, I really try to remain um, humble but confident. That's the key because I I believe solely in my in my abilities, but I know I know at any given time. I could, I could lose a fight or I, I probably will lose a fight coming up. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not stupid. You know what I mean? I know anything can happen. Yeah. So I remain humble. I remain humble, but I also remain confident in my abilities to go out and 
and literally like just obliterate people. That's the mindset I have to have. Um, you, you have, you can't have that self doubt because you have that self doubt. That's, that's what's going to be a downfall. So I have to have that go out and obliterate this guy and we're going to end it. We're going to see how we're going to try to get it done in 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. If 30 seconds go longer than 30 seconds, we're going to try to get it done in, in, in four minutes. All right. All right. Four minutes go past. Okay. Round two, a minute of round two. That's, that's literally the confidence yeah. you have to have, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Otherwise you're like, man, all right, this fight, I know this guy's tough. It's probably going to go five rounds or three rounds. Um, we'll try to beat him, you know, in the third round. My strategy is to pull away in the third round. You can't, you can't fight like that. Yeah, you can't exactly. fight like that. Because automatically you're setting yourself up for the fight to go three rounds. <clears throat> now, Ode, Every um, one of my fights. Sorry I'm about sorry, that. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to ask real quick. No, no, go ahead. Now, uh, taking the championship out of the equation, because every fighter wants to fight for a title. Who are some of the bantamweights oh, of course, of on course. your wish list for you think like, man, that that's that's a fight I'd love to have. To be honest, I haven't even really thought about it. I'm just like, I'm willing to fight and any any opportunity I get. Just the first opportunity I get, I'm there. You know what I mean? Like I'm not I really don't I to be completely honest with you, I don't really follow I don't follow fighting that much, man. I um I kinda have so much like I, I'm a um an educator as well. So it's, it's all about balance, right? Um, I think life is about balance. So I try to take myself out of fighting whenever I'm not fighting so I can have that, that need for it, that yeah. drive and that hunger. Otherwise, if I do it so much, I just get tired of it. You know what I'm saying? So I, I try to take myself out of it. So I let my coaches do their thing, and I, um, you know, I, I focus on my kids. And then when I'm fighting, I focus on fighting. So now I'm like, I told my coach, man, whatever, whatever call I get, I'm there. I don't care who it is. I don't really have a, a specific. I just, whoever, whenever, I'm here, I'm ready, let's go. So you're not really watching fighters until it's time to, to, to fight them, and then you're studying them. Exactly. And I don't even study them. I watch one film on them. <laughs> okay. I, like I said, man, I, I call myself a Picasso for a reason. Um, I don't study fighters at all. Um, here's why. You watch a fighter, right? And then you're watching this highlight film and you're like, oh man, this fighter has a really good, I let my coaches do that. So my coaches will study a fighter and they'll, they'll, they'll relay, okay, this fighter is good at this, this, and that, or whatever. All right, but you're, you're watching the fighter and you're visualizing all the stuff that he's good at. And you're like, okay, man, this fighter has a really heavy cross. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you're, the whole fight, you're watching for that right hand. This is your whole fight. You're like, oh, watch for that right hand. Watch for that right hand. So now you're hesitant of doing what you want to do, you know what I'm saying? And you got to, and it's in this game, you got to be able to, you got to be able to, to take risks. Really, you have to yeah. be able to take risks. You can't, you can't fight safe all the time. You got to be able to take risks. You should fight. There's a time and a place for everything. There's a time to fight safe when you get, you know what I'm saying? And there's a time to take risks. You yeah. got to know when, when to do what thing. But um, I feel like for me, watching film is, for me, it's overrated for me. Not for everyone is different, but for me, it's overrated because it, it makes me do, it makes me uh, play things too safe sometimes. Like I used to watch wrestlers and I was like, ah, why am I watching this? Yeah. I don't, I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I want to go out there and be myself. And I think the best me is when I'm myself and I'm not worried about anything. I just go out there and fight my fight. So I Fight your let, game instead of trying to defend against their game. Exactly, yeah. man. I Makes mean, it's, sense. It's, it's a, yeah, man. Exactly. Yeah. A warfare. You want to go out there and beat a hammer, and in order to beat a hammer, you, you got to go yeah. out there and do what you want to do. Otherwise, you're like backing up, waiting for that cross. Yeah, backing that's up, good, waiting man. For that cross. And that's then, good. yeah, and then all of a sudden, you're waiting for that cross. He throws a head kick. Boom. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, what's the next so, step? Yeah, when do man. when do you find out? Uh, who you fight? H have you guys talked about that yet, or, or is is that still down the road? Low, yeah, we're low weighing. Way? Well, we're we're weighing some options right now, but we don't have anything. We don't have anything uh, lined out right now. Um, we've got to do uh, you know because paperwork stuff, man. You know, you started sending all this all this paperwork. You know what I mean? So we got to do all this uh, paperwork stuff from USADA, yeah. and then. We could get you know get it in on which what we you know we want to make some some calls and connections. I'm not exactly sure yet, but I know uh, I'm gonna be ready pretty soon here. I'm, I want to go like right away, like yeah. I'm ready right away. I'm I'm ready to go. 
That's good. I'm, 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 I guess I'm hungry. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry right now. No, we could tell, man. And I, I, I'm excited for you too, man. I'm excited to see uh, what you can bring to the UFC. I think uh, your personality is definitely what they need. Uh, and, and your fighting style is, is, is as well, man. Uh, are you planning on staying Bantamweight? Yeah, for sure. I'm most definitely uh, I'm fighting at, at Bantamweight. Um, you right. know, once again, I don't cut any weight. I, I, I literally don't cut any weight at all. I walk, I fight what I walk around at. Um, <laughs> I do, man, I do things so different. I just, honestly, like I said, the, the Picasso of MMA, I do things differently. I see, I see things differently. I do things differently than everybody else. Um, it's, it, you know, weight cutting, I just feel the, the, the reason I'm able to be so explosive and so fast and just be able to be myself is because I cut zero weight. And I think yeah. when you eat away at your muscles like that, you can't react the way you, you know what I'm saying? A normal person, you, you can't, you can't react to your normal abilities. You're limiting your, your abilities. And I don't care what anyone says. There's no way that your body can gain all that muscle back in one day. Hey, absolutely no way. And as a regular guy, no I've, that, I've never understood that because I, I, it's just, to me, does sound like it would be draining and how do you get that strength back a day later? You um, don't. I mean, you don't. Your brain is tricking you. Yeah. Your brain is tricking you and telling you that, yeah, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Your brain plays tricks on you. Yeah, I'm here, I'm ready. But in reality, it's, that's not true, man. In reality, it's not true. And I'm surprised more... You start fighting, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised more fighters don't have your same ment mentality where they where they don't want to cut weight because I mean just the stress of that has to be crazy. Well, we saw that on the last pay per view oh. with Kiesa where well, yeah, he stopped cutting me, weight like that. But, yeah. Oh yeah, man, it's it's crazy. And for me, I I invite it. I'm like, yeah, man, I invite this guy to cut some weight. I'm like, hey, I hope my opponent is cutting all kinds of weight. Oh, he's coming down from 170. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because all that means is I get to dance circles around him for exactly. you know, a round or two. See, you know, I, I, so I'm trying to cut 20 pounds right now, <laughs> but uh, it's not working. So. That's a different kind of cut. It's a different kind of cut. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got to cut pizza, like got to cut donuts. Uh, man. Oh, yeah. But listen, we are excited, man. I'm, I'm definitely excited for you. Uh, you know, getting this. I love your energy. Uh, let everybody know where they can find you right now on social media. Oh, awesome, man. First off, I just want to say, before I do that, I want to say thank you guys so much for reaching out, man. Um, I always tell people, the people that I'm going to be bringing up the most are the people that reach out to me in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, when, when I become a UFC champion, you guys reach out to me, and I will do, just be like, hey, remember I, I had an interview with you in the beginning? I'll be like, hey, I got you. You were the first on my list. For sure, man. Um, I, always, I respect the people that reach out to me but when I, in the beginning because – those are the people that, you know, if you're the smallest radio station that has two followers, I'm going to get you, I'm going to put you on my list to be one of the first ones that I go to if I, if I make it there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because that's what, that's, I, I, respect, I, I really appreciate that. You guys are able to do that for me and uh, looking out and stuff like that. But anyways, um, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, I mainly use Instagram, to be honest. Uh, I think all my stuff, all my stuff goes through Instagram, like my Facebook um, and my Twitter. So my Facebook page is the Jamaican Sensation, and my Instagram is O'Day Osborne. So it's at O D E Osborne, O S B O U R N E, man. And not N E man, but O S B O U R N E, <laughs> period, man. Man. <laughs> man. man. <laughs> All right, well, real quick before we let you go, if you weren't a fighter, and obviously you got the education going on, but if you weren't a fighter, what other kind of entertainer would you want to be? I'd probably, be, to be honest, I'd be like um, a radio or uh, some kind of um, anchor. I'd be an anchor, man, some kind of anchor. Like, I was a sports anchor in high school. Like, okay. I, that was my thing. I, was, I, love, I love, like, doing, you know, anchor or just talking and, and using my – because you got to use your gifts, man. Like, if you're not waking up every day and giving people your gift, <laughs> yeah, definitely. you know, what, what are you doing? You know, so that's awesome. Like, if you, you're passionate about something, like – for me, I want to be able to use my gift is my personality, and I'm and I'm a I'm a great fighter. You know what I'm saying? So like being able to use my personality was yeah. like um, if I wasn't really a fighter, I'd probably be like an actor or a television. You know something yeah. where I could use my personality or um, you know I really eventually what I really want to do with this fighting is be able to motivate young adults and 
you know, just drive them, man, because a lot of, they're our future, and I want to be able to, to motivate them, um, not just in my school, but in all the schools around the nation. Yeah. Um, I, I, I the thing, what I do is I, I use um, the structure, motivation, and discipline from martial arts, and I use that within the school. So I use the structure of building their character, um, discipline, and teaching them, which discipline in, uh, in the school system is, is, is kind of flawed. Their view of discipline is the kids do something bad and they give them a consequence. Yeah. The martial arts view of my view, which is the actually correct view of discipline, is teaching them to do something they don't want to do, but they know that they should do it because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. And then finally, motivation, which is by telling them that they can be whatever they want to be and do whatever they want to do. And they have a voice to advocate for themselves. So I want to be able to implement that throughout schools and, you know, just motivate young adults, man. That's, that's, what, that's what it's about. Like, money for me is nothing, man. It, it, it really means nothing to me. Yeah. Um, I know I need a lot of it, though, in order to do what I want to do. Exactly. So. You, UFC <laughs> fighter, motivational speaker. And listen, man, you're talking about acting. We see a lot of uh, UFC fighters make it into movies and stuff like that. So, you know. That's yeah, that's always uh, an open Woodley, door. Actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah I used to train with Tyrone Woodley. Actually, he uh, he was one of the one of the guys that was out there. Uh, NWA. He was what's, what's the movie? Trevor Compton. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tyrone Woodley's uh, been in some movies. Yeah, it's a big um, agency yeah, behind the UFC now, love- man. You yeah, you have is. a whole other career on exactly. your on your hands. You never know. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. I'm trying to I'm trying to do everything and anything, man. I um I think a lot of fighters they get into the UFC and they solely just focus on mainly the UFC. I want to, man, you gotta, I want to be able to be, to do, I want to be able to do everything. I, I just want to be like, just Adam. be just out here doing everything, setting no limitations for myself. Like I want to be in a UFC, be a teacher, be acting, be motivating kids, <laughs> be on radio shows, just, you know what I'm saying? Everything. Just be doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, just build that brand up, man. Keep keep going with it, man. But listen, man, we appreciate you. We'll go ahead and let you go. But, uh, man, we look forward to your first fight in the UFC, and we'll definitely uh, stay in contact with you. And, uh, man, keep motivating, man. I know those kids are looking up to you out there, so uh, just keep it, keep it up. Oh, thank you, man. And I do have a message for any kid that wants an autograph. I'll just send a picture of their first and last name on a card, and I'll send it to their DM. So if just DM me. If you're if you're a student, and I'll send that to you, no problem. Oh, dope, dope. Yeah, cool, man. That's O'Day Osborne, man. We appreciate it, and good luck with all your future ventures in the UFC and everything else you're gonna be doing, bro. Thank you, guys. You guys have a blessed blessed rest of your day, man. Thank you, O'Day. Appreciate it. No problem. All right. O'Day Osborne, man. Listen, if that doesn't excite you. We need fighters with personality. I mean, oh, I mean those those are the people that they make badly it. Need not just in the UFC, but j- just make it in life is people with personalities. Yeah. There's a lot of fighters. I mean, and, and that's been a hard sell right now. That that's something UFC's been lacking. Connor isn't fighting anymore, really. He might fight again in the UFC, but you know, we haven't seen him fight for when, a while. When the time's right for him. Exactly. Like he's, he's put himself in that position and a lot on top of his great skill. I mean, we're talking about Cormier is doing details. I yeah. mean, that's he, he doesn't really have a personality. So for him to be doing something like details on ESPN where he's breaking down fighters, it's like, uh, you can find somebody more entertaining than, than than Cormier, which I like Cormier, but he's not really an entertaining fighter. Yeah, well, I, well I, you can't really have Connor do it because I, I, don't, I don't think ESPN wants to, well, to you bleep that much. You can't bleep that much. And you probably, I'm not, I'm not sure if you... He might, he might be a little too wild of a fighter to really to really get in on that. But it's, I'm not sure he, if he'd take that little check either. <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. Kobe... Kobe well, Kobe. Well, right, it's Kobe's thing, so yeah, exactly. he doesn't care about the check. Exactly. But I mean, if Peyton Manning's doing it, it's got to pay something. Yeah. Well, he had to do something after he, Papa John's. <laughs> well, yeah, that 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 Maybe wasn't he get a job loss. now that Shaq is there. <laughs> but it's uh, just fascinating. Big personality fighters in in all types of fighting. It's it's just, I mean, really, and not even just in fighting. In all sports, look at baseball. Baseball is continuously big complaining. Big personalities that aren't like. The Adrian Broner type personalities, like but Broner's like, a clown. There's but, but a that's, difference. But that's the thing. I, th- I I don't know if people know how to separate that. So you have personalities like O'Day and like Connor's kind of in the middle where he 
has you you could almost hate him, but you're like, wait, he we know what he's doing, and and some people still don't like him uh, for for some things he's it's done. Calculated, same with Floyd. Floyd's calculated too. It's it, yeah. What Floyd when Floyd Mayweather was pretty boy Floyd coming up, beating everybody. Yep. And wasn't near knockouts popular. at that at point in time until he really started getting hand injuries. He wasn't near as popular yep. when he becomes Money Mayweather and he starts saying inflammatory things. Become people an enemy. start paying yep. to see you lose. So you can you can get up there on a great personality. You can get up there on a negative personality. Yep. A personality can go a long way. The key is having the skills to back it up. Yeah. So that and that's and just Ode seems to have a lot of a varying amount of styles that I think can can probably help him out of a lot of jams. Plus, I have to say, just from what little I've seen so far of the Contender series, I prefer this so much more than Ultimate Fighter. I don't like the, I didn't like the whole reality show vibe. It's like, this is like... Plus, the reality show vibe is done. You know, I mean, there's still a million reality shows out there. It doesn't have the same feel anymore. I, I mean, I liked Ultimate Fighter when it first started. It, you yeah, know, because it first was... First couple seasons were cool. It was groundbreaking and different, but then it was like, how many seasons were they put? It, yeah. They were putting out so many seasons a year. And it's just, is this necessarily giving you the best fighters? Because a lot of times, the the guys who are winning the seasons weren't the ones that yeah. were going on and yeah. actually succeeding. It was guys that were going out in the season. It's like, but this isn't like a, the real situation. You're not in your camp. You're not training for this this yeah. guy's fight. You know, it's, I, I always thought it was like, it was interesting, especially early. I mean, plus it gave us, you know, that that Griffin Bonner fight in that first exactly. finale. Exactly. I mean, that's but and that will always be worth it, just overall. But at the same time, it's just a lot of it just didn't. But then seem you had some fit. people that were acting, and it's like, oh, okay, it, you're not really like that. You're doing it for the TV, hundred percent. And, and and yeah, it just gets out of hand when you start doing reality TV. This, this is much better. And then you, you, even the fights, man, because you know I've been watching UFC a lot. I watch the fight nights. I mean, ESPN has done a great job of covering the UFC, putting everything on there. I mean, we were scrolling yeah. through and you saw what ESPN plus looks like with all the yeah. fights and everything going on there, but they've done a great job. And with the contender series, these people are fighting for a contract, so yeah. they don't want to and lose a non -gar it all. And it's not guaranteed because yeah. that's the other thing, ultimate fighter. It's like, even you could see in some of these seasons when I was still watching it, like at the end of it, it's like, you'd see Dana White handing out that contract. And some of the, sometimes you could kind of tell it's like, I don't really want to be giving this guy a contract. It's like, it's like when Jay Z gave out those uh, Rockefeller contracts yeah. uh, during the MTV thing with that bl that blind kid that yeah. won, and it never got on. Yeah, it's like you here's know. the contract, but it actually says you're never going to be signed. Yeah, to Rockefeller. You know, you can go making the band if you want to talk about exactly. that. Exactly, but but still, yeah. you're 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 talking about like a point where they're where someone is forced to give a contract, and this is just like no, this this. This guy is somebody that I think is worthwhile in, yeah. in, in investing in and in, in just seeing it from a fight and from all the stuff you see from how you bring fighters in normally, but just in a bit of a of a way that's yeah. that, that you get some more entertainment value and more eyes on that fighter. So you have somebody like Ode you can now because let's face it, if it's on TV, we want to be entertained as well. Like yeah. listen, as as diehard fight fans, we do love the good fight, but when we're having a fight party, we want to see some entertainment too, right? Yeah, you know, you you ha you get together. It's like you don't mind see, if you're sitting there watching it on your own. You don't necessarily mind seeing guys roll for a while. Yeah. When you got a group of people there, you want something to talk hanging about. Hanging out, you you want to see somebody get lit up. Listen, at our last fight bar uh, party, we all did not like Ben Askren at all. Not a bit. But not we love the, we love the fact that he talks mess, and we love the fact he got whooped because of it. Of course. And, and that was the entertainment value in that. So even though we hate the people that talk so much mess, man, you're too cocky. Like we love the fact that he does that for the fact that he got whooped on. Well, and that's that's the perfect thing. And that's that was the same thing. It's like he was the other result of the Mayweather type person. Yeah. Where you talk a lot, you have this personality that goes out there and says this and that. UFC, you need me. But when me. you get caught... You need me. If you get caught and you get beat, it's... The road back is yeah. really tough for you. So you... I mean, it's worthwhile because it gets you... It gets your name up there quickly. Because even though he... I mean, he, yes, he had several fights and he was... But he built a lot of it up outside the yeah. UFC. But he came into the UFC as a reasonable level star. Super hyped. He was, he was, I mean, a, a big acquisition for yeah. them because he, he came up and he was going through everybody. Yeah. So, you know, and, and the personality doesn't hurt. 
If if, if if you're a good talker, man, you talk him into the building. And even in the loss, like you lost the quickest ever yeah. th- that anyone did in the UFC. But guess what? Your name is almost more famous now than it was. So that, that and loss now those almost two get you. a rematch and they're both known commodities yeah. even more so because that exact way that that fight happened will never happen again. Yeah. It just won't happen. Yeah. You know, so it's you, you can you actually get to see a fight where, you know, who can win in the actual real matchup instead of just the greatest game plan moment ever. Cause we don't know is, I mean, we don't know what happens to that fight. What if he missed? What if he missed? Yeah. I mean, it was a big, a maybe big, Askren a big risk. St- maybe you know? Askren. And you hear fighters talk about it all fight. the time. You have to take the risk yeah. uh, and, and taking that risk could lead to, to a loss sometimes. But at the same time, it led to him, being in the record books as breaking the record for a quickest fight and, ever. And I don't think that's getting touched. It can't. I mean, because honestly, it was three seconds. So if, if you want to be technical with it, if the ref was closer, yeah. it would have been a three-second fight. Exactly. Well, I mean, and you just saw one that was, I think, tied for the third fastest ever, and it was 12 seconds. Yeah. 12 seconds is so much longer. Yeah. <laughs> so much longer exactly. this weekend. It's like, that's what's crazy. It's like 12 seconds. Like, that's insane that that fight ended that fast. And then you think, Oh, wait, one ended in five, and five <laughs> was longer than it should have gone. Uh, Greg Hardy had a quick one uh, on fight night. I I'm, know- just, I'm just happy to see him not fighting women anymore. <laughs> and I know that's the biggest thing, and a lot of people are upset with this, but we talk about the personality. We 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 hate him. We don't like what he's done. He's never really apolo- talked about it and apologized for it. Him, I can't wait till um, he gets beat. And so he hasn't fought. You, I, I really think this last fight was his best fight uh, or, or best opponent, uh, but it was a quick one still, you know? So he's, uh, a, fi- he's a physical freak. He's a well-known name. People are already going to hate him or some people are going to love him because he's a well-known football player yeah. who was super talented. And guess what? That does bring in some NFL of course fans it does. That, into the UFC. So it's a smart move by Dana to bring him in. He's a physical specimen and just... He's a, a big dude. And, and, and listen, he's a type two that... Once he gets his first loss, like it's going to be a big deal. It's going to be talked about, and he'll get more fights out of it. Uh, so, Maybe you 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 never know. Some guys like that. If if you come up and you, that's that's one case where actual fighting is almost like wrestling. With some people, it's like if you build someone up as an undefeated fighter, you know, sometimes you get that loss. Yeah, you take that, and, then, and then you don't, you don't ever come back yeah. from it. We don't know. That's that's one of the great things about fighting is. When somebody finally takes that loss, how 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 their reaction is to it? Because in the UFC, you take a loss. Everybody has a loss. Now, John Jones's loss, I don't think is necessarily a loss. It's different there, but, but everyone yeah. else in the sport, really. I mean, we talked about how great Anders, Anderson Silva was. Uh, yeah, greatness dies. Like, like you don't keep greatness forever, you know. Well, and it, and it, I meant to ask O'Day that question: How he feels seeing Anderson still fight? after knowing like he was the most dominant ever. But I think that just tells you that Silva just loves it. Like when he took yeah. that fight short notice, when, I mean, just the fact that he's still out there fighting now, it's clearly, he's not doing it for anything else but the love. But even when he took his first loss back when he was unbeatable, some of that was just for somebody like him, especially for when he would slip those different attacks, that little dip yeah. in speed is all it took for him to finally get caught. Just it's it's your margin in these things is so razor thin, you just don't know. Yep. And like I said, he didn't know. It's just that fraction of a second where it goes from avoiding an attack to actually getting hit with it makes all the difference in the world. And you have to be mentally tough to be a fighter because you you have to be oh, able to Lord. take that loss because anytime man, it it takes one wrong move, one hit, one I I, I one hit to the temple. And you're knocked out. You know what I'm saying? So as a fighter, you have to learn to bounce back from that. Forget the last fight. And if you really want to be a champion, uh, you know, keep going. Get up and keep going. Because like you said, you're going to take a loss. Uh, And that's why sometimes it's good to take your losses early. You know, you know what it's like to lose and be able to get up. And now, okay, now I'm winning again. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, I mean, that's that's any sport. Sometimes, Sometimes you have to take the losses to learn how to, to learn what your weakness is. Yeah. I mean, even in a non-loss... But there's some sports you could keep losing and you'd still get paid the same. So 
In the NBA, we see some players that really don't care. We see teams, we see owners, they don't care about winning the championship. As long as they cash the check. They get that money, they're cool with it. So you could take losses and, and things like that. When it's an individual sport, when you lose, you have to be, be able to be mentally tough to get back up because individual sports, if you're out, you're not getting paid. You don't have a guaranteed contract for five years, six years. No, and some some guys, you have to, sometimes they go away for a little bit. Like, look at, like, Uriah Faber went away for a little bit. Yeah. And, but I mean, he, I came back I, and had a good fight. I, I didn't did, expect it. But I, I wasn't shocked by that because he, even when, even the losses he took, he usually took losses to great fighters. Yeah. And his fights, his, I, I would always like watch his fights, not as much as like somebody like Showtime Pettis, but like those guys are action fighters. It's like, you see their name on there. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to get a good fight. They might, they might beat this guy. They might not, but they, you know, in some ways they're kind of like a gatekeeper. It's like, you got to, you're going to, you have to beat this person. Yeah. Doesn't matter what their record says. And uh, you you mentioned it when you walked in, but Orlovsky uh, still fighting, and I couldn't believe it when I saw He's that on like the card. I'm like, man, this guy has been around for a long time, and I mean, he had a really good fight. They were just dead at the end, where he started getting hit in the fifth, in the in the third round, I believe, or was a fifth. Can't remember how many rounds they had. It had to be three, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it was only three because both of them are pretty old. But uh, yeah, he was taking some hits at the end where they were just dead i thought he was about to lose after dominating the fight but yet another guy that when he was coming up was unbeatable but yeah. i mean in some of those guys cases they keep trying to adapt they clearly love it but you have to take advantage of the time when you're on top like take advantage of that right now you can still fight i mean we talked about tito ortiz and lindell uh, uh fighting recently yeah. which was i think that was wasn't that de la hoya that yeah, it's put bad. That crap on. It's bad. Uh, so you see people like that where they don't know when to give it up, but then you see the people like Silva that will, can still fight in UFC and, and still go, but they're not at the top of their game anymore. That's why you got have to take advantage uh, why, why you're at the top. You know, and well, and the other thing too is it's not like boxing. They don't build you up. You don't get to duck yeah. guys. It's like once you show enough and your name is out there enough, you're... you're you're fighting the other best guys. Yeah. You don't, you don't get to avoid best guys. You don't get to dodge drug tests. You don't get to do anything else like yeah. that. And that's what I love about the UFC compared to boxing. And I still love boxing. I'm not dogging boxing, but they do have, have it set up a lot better right now. You know, and they they, do, we, we see boxers that don't fight until sometimes it's too late. Pacquiao Mayweather should have been, listen, it's still did great before. money, but it should have been at least five years before easily. Uh, we see that with with Wilder and uh uh your boy um who just lost <laughs> my boy Joshua's my boy <laughs> yeah Anthony Joshua yeah uh, you know I hope they fight soon I hope it's not six years seven years down the road I want to see them fight now once again that's a comeback from the loss thing because we don't know how Anthony Joshua comes back from yeah. the loss he didn't lose <laughs> and he might have to do a rematch with with oh, Ruiz he, he, that's you know? already that, I think that's uh, already pretty much done. That, and, and, and then there's the rematch with uh, uh, Wilder and Wilder and Fury. Fury. Uh, so, which bo I mean, boxing is that building, was a crazy. Boxing fight. is building their names back up though, because it, it there was a struggle for a while. Because they're starting to do some smart things, like not putting everything on pay per view, exactly, or paid or or paid cable. I mean, I think HBO did a pretty good job with boxing, but they also weren't helping boxing because they weren't getting the names out there enough. Yeah, and then everything was on pay per view, but now ESPN and you know what? has we'll, boxing. We'll buy yeah. fights if we get to see fights. Correct. Like we would buy the NBA Finals if the NBA Finals were on pay per view because we get to see the NBA. We get to follow these players. When you have to buy every single fight, like it has been in the recent past, you don't get to see anything. Like, how are we going to follow these fighters if we have to pay seventy dollars to see them every time? Well, and. And just and it's not just some of the biggest names that you think of automatically, but all throughout boxing, how many times were people kept away from each other? Yeah. Or you fought too early, or you fought too late, or whatever the case may be. You know, and it's a lot of smart strategy. But the problem there is, that's one thing where it's like you don't get the guys to who get like these unblemished records yeah. in the UFC because they have to fight people. In boxing, everything is set up by promoters. And there's too many organizations. There's too many belts. Yep. There's too many weight classes. I mean, in my opinion, there's too many weight classes. Although I would, I would much rather have all the weight classes and more, and get rid of some of those belts because 
some of these guys are carrying around belts where it's like you're not the champ. Exactly. You know. Yeah. You, th- this guy is the champ. That is not you. Yep. Yep. Uh, and, and so this weekend we had the Pacquiao uh, Thurman fight. Thurman's coming off what, about two and a half years absence. He was out for a long time. He's been out for a minute. Uh, Way had, too had, long. Had a, a really bad injury. Yeah. I personally think he should have taken an easy fight before Pacquiao. Uh, I, I think he, he got bad advice if he thought Pacquiao was going to come in and be an easy fight. Because you Pacquiao's have to figure never that's an easy almost... Fight. E, it's, you either thought, one, it was an easier fight, two, you just did it for the money, or, or the combination of the two. Because Pacquiao is still money. No matter how many losses he takes, he will continue to be money. Definitely. And I think that's probably what it was, especially being out for so long. Guess what? Like, I'm not it's making the money. money. Yeah, it's the I'm biggest money. I'm not making money, money those get. two and a half years that I've been out. Uh, so you do have to take that. He didn't look prepared to me all the way. I, 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 I can't lie. I didn't watch the fight, but I did watch a lot of highlights of the fight. And every highlight I saw were all Pacquiao highlights. I didn't see a highlight from Thurman on anything I found. And he had some good hits in, in the later rounds. I mean, he, he was definitely connecting. Right. Uh, right to the face of Pacquiao, but it wasn't affecting Pacquiao. Uh, you know, Thurman got knocked down in the first round, yeah, and that I think shocked everybody. That's a that's that's where you have a bad start. Yeah, and I I think Pacquiao probably dominated the first five rounds before uh, Thurman even started and winning rounds. That's this age, this version of Pacquiao, forty year old like that. Pacquiao. That's Pacquiao is my age. He should not be you. He should not be catching first round knock knockdowns on you. Yeah, there's there's just no way. Yep. But I mean, listen, man, forty year old champion, you can do anything you want to do. Just keep, you know, uh, you might need some substances to do it. I I've always thought that about Pacquiao. I'm I'm not I'm certainly not alone. Now there's a lot thought. of people that aren't Pacquiao fan. I've loved Pacquiao from the beginning. There's a lot of boxers, even though I'm not a fan of Floyd's personality necessarily. Uh, a lot of people aren't fans of his fighting or his fights because they seem boring. Right. You got to give a guy props because it takes one hit to take a loss. We just talked about that. And for this guy to have that great of defense, that's some amazing boxing. So yeah. no matter what you think about Pacquiao and the fact that he's 40 years old and is now a champion is still an amazing uh, feat. And he, and he beat a guy that, let's face it, was before this layoff was... The next guy, you know, I mean, yeah. he, he's the guy that everybody was talking about. Injuries, man. You, you catch the wrong injury, you just don't know. But that's why after an injury like that, I think you have to take. They should have given him an easier fight. They shouldn't should've. have went. They shouldn't have ran for the money because I think an easier fight would have helped him get a little bit more back into it. Because even at this age, Pacquiao is not a cupcake. He's not a pushover. He's not. Yeah. He's not there to get beat. Yeah. You know. So, I yeah, I think that's that's bad strategy because you could still get, I, I think they're figuring, Oh, we, someone else will get the Pacquiao payday. It's like, well, sacrifice this one payday for more paydays down the road. Yeah. Because even though this is a split decision, you don't hear anybody talking about on a want for, or a desire for a rematch. Everybody's trying to get Floyd to come out of retirement. I mean, because that, that would be the next, you know, big, God, big not. fight. <laughs> I'm thinking it could happen. I'm not sure though. With, with the way Pacquiao looks, I'm not sure. Does he want to? Does he want to fight Pacquiao now? Because Pacquiao still looks good. I'm not sure what Floyd. I mean, obviously Floyd can train for six months and, and get into fighting shape again. But Floyd can do whatever he wants. But I think the McGregor fight is the perfect example of a fight that Floyd will take now. The only thing that matters for Floyd now is that zero at the end of his record. Yeah, because. Only Rocky Marciano gets to say that. Rocky Marciano and Floyd. That's the whole list. The whole list. Yeah. So, no fight. If Floyd ever takes another fight, I cannot imagine a fight that he would take. If you see him take a Pacquiao fight, he knows that Pacquiao can't beat him. I, I just, or he knows they have a deal <laughs> for him not to beat him. I, I just... There is nothing... That is worth more. He's not going to take a loss. Then that's zero. Exactly. He's not taking a loss. Yeah. You don't want a loss. You don't want a draw. You don't yeah. want anything. He can't take any of that. So he is in that position now, and nor should he have to. Yeah. You know what? Uh, even though you have to count McGregor, which I don't think you should, <laughs> there were 50 cracks at the man. Yeah. He didn't get a loss in any one yep. of those 50. So you could say whatever you want. You could say he ducked people. 
I don't know, man. I remember Floyd fighting a lot of fighters. He did. He might not be people's favorites. And, you know, they say he ducked all these people. It's like, I don't think he ducked Pacquiao. I think Pacquiao ducked drug tests more than he ducked Pacquiao. I think it was a combination. I, I don't, you know, they both camps were saying different things, so I don't think we'll ever fully know. But they still uh, made their money. Who, what's next for Pacquiao in your mind? Who who do you think he should take on? Because uh, some good fighters. It's in that tough. Division. To, it's it. There are good fighters in the division. It's tough to say though because all they're going to try to do is talk Floyd, 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 Floyd for a while. I haven't seen or read anything else about who his next fight is other than people wanting it to be Floyd. <laughs> I don't know why they want it to be Floyd. That was not a good fight. I mean, are those real boxing people, though? I don't think so. Of course not. But you, I think... I think I, that might be social media wave, people. But I think the wave behind it is so big. Plus, I don't think any... The, the big-time boxing people, what's the benefit to you to get a good young up-and-comer against Pacquiao? If he beats Pacquiao now, what does it mean? Yeah. It doesn't mean what it used to mean. Like when Marquez knocked out Pacquiao, that meant something. Yeah. When Timothy Bradley got that bad decision <laughs> win over Pacquiao, that was huge. If if a good up and coming fighter now beats Pacquiao, it's like it, say Thurman won that fight. Yeah. You know, if he if he would have been given the decision the other day, what would that have really meant for him? For Thurman? Yeah, it would have meant a, a rematch against Pacquiao, probably. Yeah. But I mean, as far as his progression, and it wouldn't have meant anything. In the title if Pacquiao chase. lost, it wouldn't have meant anything. He's Correct. forty years old. That's, that's, Pacquiao can fight ten more times, lose ten times. That's what I'm saying. It still won't do anything to his legacy. For Thurman, it definitely hurt him losing this fight. And that's what I'm it, saying. This it wouldn't is, have done a whole bunch if you won. You're I right. don't. I don't think if if I'm a young up and coming fighter, you got to put the money things aside. Sometimes you have to think long with the money. Yeah. There is no win in a Pacquiao fight for you right now. Because he's still good enough for any fighter, fast enough and strong enough to beat you. Yeah, and but you beat him. That's like people ask, like you know, because I'm a bigger guy. It's like people talk about fighting. It's like, what good's it gonna do for me to fight a guy that's five foot six? Yeah. If I win, I'm a jerk for even for fighting. fighting five, every, but God forbid lose, I lose. It's over for you. you know, forever. I mean, what, what do you? That's and I mean you have to think of it that way for a fighter with this right now. If I'm a young up and coming fighter, it's like I'll do respect to you, Manny, but no thank you. My eyes are on titles. Yeah. My eyes are on titles and nothing else. And I don't think beating Pacquiao really impresses people in the title hunt right now. I don't think that's where it's at. Yeah. Where it's at right now is, you know, guys like Lomachenko, the Spence fight. You know, that's that's where that's where fights are right now. Yep. And, and you're actually getting to get some good, younger, up-and-coming names. And, Lomachenko uh, is a monster. Spence Jr. and Sean Porter are fighting in September, September 28th at Staples. Uh, there's a lot of good fights coming up. I mean, boxing is definitely at, at a way better place than it's been in, in a while. Thank uh, God, because uh, I, I I was prepared. <laughs> I was one of the people that was putting the dirt on it. I mean, along I, with I many switched others. over all the way to UFC. Like I wasn't watching boxing at all for yeah, for, I, for a couple years. Well, I would watch like the major major fights, but I wasn't watching man, top rank. I wasn't you know I wasn't watching any of those fights. May, Mayweather McGregor almost put the dirt on it for me because <laughs> I was just like, this is a big but fight. You still people. watched it, but I mean. Then still came to that Canelo, fight party. Canelo, well, that was because it was a birthday party. Still hated that fight. <laughs> All right, uh, there crazy news. Uh, Maxime, da have you seen his dad? I don't know, dad ass Chev. Uh, he was undefeated. Had a fight this weekend. Eleven rounds. They mm -hmm. the 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 corner threw in the right. towel. Something doesn't look right. So they're walking him out of the ring. Can't even stand up. Yeah. Uh, did you see the highlights of that? I did, and the, you know what? That corner. They're walking him out of the right. ring. Uh, he, one more hit, he could have been dead. Exactly. Because this guy, basically, long story short, had to have brain surgery uh, because he he was so messed up. And when you're looking in a corner, you just don't know. Like he looked out of it, but he looked out of it, but not that. But bad. not that bad. He still looked okay. He wasn't knocked out. He was just dazed. Obviously, the corner saw something in his eyes where they were like, "This isn't right." Uh, we got to call this. So they're trying to walk him out. They were trying to, you know, yeah. he's trying to walk out on his own. His legs were just giving yeah. out on him. Like he didn't know how to walk. Uh, so you knew something was wrong 
You need a good corner sometimes. And uh, and thank God he did. Uh, but yeah, brain surgery they saved his life. Saved his dead. life. Uh, but man, that's crazy because that could happen to any fighter anytime. You just never know if you get hit hit in the right spot at the right time. You just never know what could happen. So I mean, these put, guys are putting their lives on the line. Uh, to, no question. To, to fight. And I think people diminish the fact that I mean, when they're training, wearing headgear and stuff like that you're still getting punched all the time by people who know how to throw punches. So I, I had this whole thing with a guy I used to work with years ago and he was talking about how he grew up and he went to school with Floyd. He's like, man, Floyd's so much smaller than me. I was like, Floyd would murder you guys smaller than Floyd would murder yeah. you because not only do they, it's like they know how to throw punches that are killers you also don't know how to take those punches. Yeah. Because they have to also be able to take ridiculously hard shots. I cannot shots. take one punch. I'll, I'll be honest. I hit my head before I had this desk here. We, I was moving things around. I have this here. I just I, I went up, not knowing this was here. Slammed my head. I thought I was gone. I thought I was going to die. So that's one hit from a cabinet. Yeah. That I was done. I was like, I never want to take another hit again. Imagine Deontay Wilder hitting you i would die <laughs> exactly so would i so That's, those people that say like oh, i would i would let mike tyson hit me for a million dollars no you wouldn't no you wouldn't be able to spend like, that million yeah i was like i i would i mean for the money i would take the fight i would run for as long as i could and the first jab he threw i would take a dive yeah <laughs> there there is no question in my mind i would I'm not engage him in any way shape or form i don't want to take a hit from a homeless me. guy downstairs i'm not yeah. i'm not you know, no, thank you. I'm a lover, not a fighter. And yeah. I don't even love people that much. So you, you know how bad <laughs> I'm I... I'm not a fighter. <laughs> you know how bad I don't want to fight. Yeah. Uh, this is by far the most we've ever talked about combat sports. Man, on, you know what? On sports show. We need to do it's, it more. It's worthwhile. Especially uh, in the summer. There's not a whole lot going on. We got combat sports, baseball, <laughs> basketball's winding down. Basketball's winding down. About to wind back up. Yeah. I mean, we, you get the little cool off period for all the people, including some friends of mine that, that hate <laughs> I hate basketball, but still listen yeah. every week. Uh, Ku- Kubrat Pul- Pulev. I don't know if I said his name right. Uh, Probably not. The heavyweight fighter that grabbed Jenny Sushi and kissed her live on, or not, it wasn't live, but on during the interview. I'm not oh, sure. Oh, yeah, I know, he, yeah, I know what ago, you're talking about. Or a couple months ago. Uh, is reinstated in, in uh, California. So do you think he should have been reinstated for that? Mm, I would have to know the entirety of the circumstances. All of it seemed pretty wrong to me. And when all these people like trying to slut shame the girl, it's like, it's like, oh, she was all over his friend. It's like, that's his it, friend. That's his friend. What does it matter? So it's his like, friend. so you're, so you're supposed to say, and that was know, after the fact too. That was, that exactly. was, that wasn't in a professional atmosphere. Exactly. That was at a party. Afterwards. So, but it's like, what it's like, so you, you say like, well, you like bring, you bring like, like a girlfriend around me or something like that. And she's all making out with you. And so after we're done with the show, I just go grab her and kiss her. <laughs> that's okay. No, it's not okay. <laughs> he's, I, he's with my friend. I, I like I said, I, oh, I, I don't know what circumstances caused that to happen. I would, I would think that he probably, if that's the length of the suspension, that seems very short. And listen, if you There's say not so, a lesson if, learned, if you there. see say someone's going after, just going after the money, don't do anything for people to be able to go after your money. Correct. Same thing with Zeke Elliott. Uh, he barely pushed that security guard. Guess don't what? Push him. He pushed the security guard. Yeah, it doesn't matter. He laid. Any type of his body on the guy's body, the security guard had the opportunity to to just swing. Yeah, now you Zeke you hit me first. It's a freight train. <laughs> and listen, just don't put yourselves in those positions. Exactly. Because guess what? You do have a lot of money, so don't screw it up. Don't do stupid things that are going to put you in positions. For and you some to of the guys sued. don't have a lot of money. <laughs> exactly, and I'm not sure. You know this this boxer, how much? I don't think he's uh, he got, necessarily he's got the kind of money Zeke has. Um. You know, we know uh, Vegas Sports Daily. That that's where uh, Jenny Sushi uh, works. We know them. Mm-hmm. We, we're right. you know, I'm actually friends with her on Facebook. Haven't really mm-hmm. had a conversation with her yet. I'm not sure if we'll ever be able to talk to her about this. Probably even, not. I even would legally, assume. I, I, I don't would think assume there's could, legal but, language that uh, would may, not allow maybe that. Maybe off air, we can talk to her and and just see, get some of the details. I know my man Mike uh, Dixon at Vegas Sports Daily has talked to me about some of the behind the scenes stuff that. She was definitely really done wrong. It. And for people to... Uh, Listen, what she, she went could through be after naked. what happened to her... She could be naked. That does not give you a right no. to grab the girl. No. 
I mean, that's what people seem to be missing in this whole thing. I couldn't believe the reactions to this and all these people just like piling on and piling on. It's like, what did that have to do that, that necessitated somebody grabbing her and kissing her? Yeah. I didn't get that in the least. I was just like, nothing that you're saying here makes any sort of logical sense. Yeah. Think of it as a family member. What if that's, what if, what if Jenny is your sister? Yep. How are you going to feel about that? Now, granted, you're probably not going up and starting something with a heavyweight boxer, but uh, well, you might try to. I mean, you know, I try to have him swing first and get more money. It's an honorable death. (laughs) It's an honorable death. But at the same time, we talk about the negative publicity. Uh, You know, people know his name now. I I didn't really know who he was before then. No, he he was not high profile in the least. Yeah. So I mean, it's it, it is what it is. He said they were friends before. He said it was an innocent thing. So. Uh, hopefully they hash it out. Obviously she didn't feel like it was innocent. Yeah. And um, you know, and realistically she's the one that gets to feel however she wants to feel about it. Yeah. Just don't put yourself in those positions. I mean, that was, first of all, you're doing an interview. Even if you wanted to kiss her, even if you guys had that vibe together, maybe, don't name it. maybe you guys have kissed before. If, if there's a camera in your face and, and you know, she's doing a it's professional interview, you know, it's not the time. Bad, bad timing, bro. Joe name is Susie Colbert. Did we learn nothing? <laughs> I mean, at least he was drunk. At least, at least we care can, less at least about how the teams the, are playing. Uh, uh, alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to kiss you. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Back to you, Mike. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Lord. All right, let's jump back into basketball. We yes. talked about Team USA. Uh, we got the, it's called the World Cup now, right? Yes, it's now the World Cup. They used to be, used the, world to be the World Championship. changed the World Cup, but they also changed the year, when they changed it in the last stretch at 2015, they changed the years. It used to be every two like, years. It used to be like the basketball, uh, the the soccer World Cup, the same year. It would just be later yeah. in the summer, and now they do it on an on an off year, so it's even closer to the Olympics. And the U.S. and most of the other countries never cared about it. The qualification process now is stupid. There's some of the better countries in the world aren't even in this. Like Slovenia is not in this because, like the U.S. is sending guys that are like G leaguers and stuff like that. Olympics are still, they were, they're trying to make this the big thing. It it won't be, but they screwed it up because the the Olympics are still the biggest thing as far as international basketball. They are, but they also screwed it all up, including all these international qualifiers because the international qualifiers are when all the best leagues in the world are playing. So no one is sending their best players. Yeah. Like if you have one guy who just decides for his country, it's like, Oh, I'm going to do this for my country to get my country in there. That team has a good shot because no one, no one sending the U.S. didn't send a fraction of their best. The team that Jeff Van Gundy qualified with, which also the fact that the U.S. even had to qualify. Alex Caruso was on that team, correct? <laughs> I mean, that's it was a, well, it was a bunch of G League Laker, players. Future Laker point guard and Hall of Famer. If you listen to Laker the Ball Bounce, Alex Caruso. Oh <laughs> listen, my lord, he's good. I like him, but yeah, they they, they, they need to come down wow. with Alex Caruso. Wow, the great white hope. Oh, clearly. But, All right, so who's dropped out so far? Oh, good lord. James we, just had, we just had another well, one some, today. Some were injuries. I mean, you know, Russ had talked about playing before, but that's not a possibility. Paul George had talked about playing before. That's not a possibility. Harden dropped out. Um, Tobias Harris dropped out today. Um, oh, I didn't see Harris. Yeah, I, his, I his, his, his was later. It got <laughs> obscured by I saw a bunch Zion of other ones. Williamson uh, dropped I, out. Yeah, Zion dropped. I think the better thing, and I actually, I actually caught this here, is more so who's still on the roster. Now, they're going to start bringing people over from the select team, most likely, which is all much younger players. Yeah. Um, your guards right now, and the guy who's going to carry the U.S. in this tournament, Damian Lillard, clearly the team leader at this point. Lillard, Kemba. See, I didn't even see Bradley Beal uh, drop out. Bradley Beal dropped out today as well. God. Uh, it's, it's uh, Anthony Davis had dropped out. I mean, like I said, Eric, was- Eric Gordon dropped out, like, Eric Gordon. I didn't even know he was in the running. Yeah. So with him dropping out, that's a... Uh... Well, Kyle Lowry's still on the team, but he's coming off like a thumb surgery. So he may not be there either. Yeah. Uh, then Donovan Mitchell and Jason Tatum. Your forwards... Well, I don't know why they have Jason Tatum as a guard, but anyway. Uh, forwards, Chris Middleton, Kevin Love, Paul Millsap, Harrison Barnes. Your boy, Kyle Kuzma. Oh, and God. P.J. Tucker. Centers, Drummond, uh, Miles Turner, and Brooke Lopez. Now, they'll probably get filled in with some more young guys. As well, which which won't be bad, but like I said, this is still. I would tell you right now, that's especially with the weekend World Cup as it is. 
That team still wins. They still win. They still win. And uh, if you think that that team is not cruising, you're kidding. Some yourself. of the other players we're talking about bringing on are Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, D'Angelo Russell. Marcus Russell. Smart is, and Jalen Brown are already invited. Okay, Julius Randle, Aaron Gordon. Uh, I mean, and guess what? I'm still going to watch it because it's still Aaron Gordon NBA internationally players. could be could be something so. fun, especially grabbing stuff off the rim. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's that's the one wrinkle in international basketball where you have to remember with some of these guys like. Uh, like Drummond or people like that, where, you know, if, if you can go get the ball yeah. as after a bounce on a rebound, like no one is stopping these guys from getting a rebound. Kawhi Leonard's game winning shot would not have existed in no. international Lord, basketball. No. He had four opportunities to knock that ball off the rim. Correct. I, and you know that what? That would be crazy. I've always, they've talked about bringing that to the NBA. I kind of like that role, actually. I don't mind it. Listen, if you can't make that shot, Listen, in the NBA, most of those shots are going straight through anyway. It's not going to affect too many things. Now, granted, it would have I mean, affected, affected one of the NBA greatest champion. shots of all time. Yeah, though. it would have affected the NBA championship this year. That was one of the best shots ever. But in a lot of other cases, I, I like it. And I tell you, if it if it bounces, go get it. Can you? I mean, because the thing is, you're going to gain far more points than you lose off of that. Yeah. Because how many points get lost because athletic big men... Are like how many point? How many more points would Javale McGee have scored in his career if those were goal tents? I mean, just think about it. Yeah, I like it. I I I'm I'm all for it. It's more rebounds. It's more stats. It all sounds good to me. So training camp starts uh, August fifth out here in Vegas. Uh, the official roster will be announced August seventeenth. Yeah. So the roster that's actually going to play, and then they and play, there's a game out here. I, th- I think the twenty second. Something like is that. Is that when it is in August? I saw the billboard on the way here. Yeah. Oh, the billboard with all players that are not playing. <laughs> I was dying because the funny thing is they've changed it multiple times. And it still didn't matter. And I saw I saw one and the players on there were all there. And two days later, there was like maybe one of those players were still there. Yeah. Uh so I mean, listen, man, they're still part of Team USA. They're just not gonna be playing. Yeah, and this this happens a lot. I mean, for the world championships, now the World Cup. You had a lot of years. Usually, it's younger stars. I mean, there's probably a more of a veteran mix there than you would expect, because a lot of times, because I I remember when they were in Turkey, the they had a bunch of guys that came on went on to be superstars and MVPs. But that was the Kevin Durant year, and Kevin Durant torched yeah. everybody, everybody, you know. But that's that's usually the World Championships for the younger guys, and then all of a sudden the LeBrons and everybody in the world will be like, oh, it's the Olympics. Listen, when all when, right, it, Coach, when okay, it's Olympic time, you're gonna <laughs> see a lot of the best. Um, I don't think you'll see LeBron. He's going to be too old. I think old. he retired from it. Yeah. Uh, but listen, man, and, and people saying Giannis, he's from Greece, so uh, he won't be playing for Team USA. Correct. Uh, there's, a, a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of international players that people are thinking we're leaving out, but uh, well, and they're not USA members. And the sad part is the stupidity of the qualifying process where I think they tried to do it to make it harder for the USA. But guess what happened? The the Eurobasket winners, Slovenia, uh, they're not in the tournament, which means no Dragic, no Luka. That's crazy. <laughs> you know, so these guys aren't playing, and they which have hurts, one of the which hurts the brand. They of the have World possibly Cup. the best team in yeah. Europe, or uh, well, maybe not the best, but right there. Yeah. So it's it's the whole thing is is stupid. I, I can't help but talk about the stupidity, but it, they, that team is dropping like flies. And I still, I look at that team, it's like, man, I see a lot of shooting. I see guys that can defend. I see big men that can go get the ball off the basket, including like another big guy like Brooke Lopez who can shoot threes. The three being a little bit closer, man, I'll tell you. I think that U.S. team with Popovich at the helm. Yeah. Barring that they, I, as long as long as you keep Dame as like the headliner because I they need they need someone like Dame Lillard to really be the leader of that team and he's a known leader so yeah. they they need one they need and a, he's a the guy. type of player that he's not winning an NBA championship so you might as well win here well they're gonna be a good team too Man, they'll be good NBA is crazy I know you can't wait Dave I I, I think we have to start our NBA show next year next we season. have to what what whatever happened to that it's coming. Weren't we supposed to just do that just with like time. with with Dre or Me, something? You like and Dre, that? yeah. <laughs> just talk about the NBA timing. I, I could talk so much about my Laker hate. I have so much more Laker hate than even the people on this show get to realize. I mean, I realize it, but 
I got Laker love. Oh, I don't have the banner. <laughs> Dang it. Where's my banner at? I, I remember somebody posted on the group the other day where they had like somebody made some fake mock up of like Nipsey Hustle edition Laker oh, uniforms. Yeah. It's like they're like, what do you think about they're these? They're actually pretty cool. Like when you rock, it was like I did see your comment. <laughs> my comment was, I wouldn't wear Laker gear if one of my kids played for the Lakers. Played for the Lakers. So no, I would not. You know rock what? Laker gear they under might, any if one of your kids played for the Lakers, I still wouldn't wear Lakers. It might gear. change your mind. I guarantee it wouldn't. I bet it would. I would tell them it's like I would wear I would wear gear from their college that they went to. <laughs> You, you wear one of I'd those Craig Hodges gear forever. You get one of those Craig Hodges NBA jerseys with your kid's right. name on the back. That's right. The generic one when he still was in the three point shootout and uh, <laughs> without a team. <laughs> so Lakers signed Giannis's little brother. One of them. Another one. The Bucks already got. Well, Bucks have yeah the older of the, the little ones. Uh, Lakers got Costas. Costas. I still can't pronounce the last name. Anta Anta Tacumpo. Anta. Yeah. Giannis. Just stick with Giannis. Well, I can't stick with Giannis now because I got to get used to the last name. I can't just call him Costas. He's not making the team. All right, I mean, uh, unless, well, he, unless... actually, he actually was signed to a two-way deal, so he's definitely... Oh, he'd be playing for the South Bay Lakers. Yeah, he's definitely going to be South Bay and could be brought up at any time. Uh, so those two-way contracts are actually really good contracts for the players. I love how people are like, oh, yeah, it's this is their, their the start of them getting Giannis. It's like... Nobody had Giannis going to Dallas, and he was in Dallas before. So <laughs> let's let's calm it down a little bit, people. They said, even ESPN did that. They said something about like he gets. They can tell him what it's like. It's like so he can't find out what it's like from anybody else on the team. Yeah, he's he doesn't he's, know anyone else. He's well liked and well known all around the league. I'm pretty sure somebody could get him some information about what it's Listen, like to be a Laker. I guarantee there won't be one superstar in the NBA from here on out because there hasn't been the last 20 years. That's not going to be a rumor to go to the Lakers. Oh, as a free even agent. when the Lakers had no chance there for a few years, especially with the Phil Jackson stuff, everyone still got rumored. I'm sure. Everyone. I'm sure I could look up Giannis lakers and there's probably a photoshop Giannis picture in a Lakers. if you jersey. type in Giannis lakers i think will on google would probably be within the top five things exactly. right now yeah right now and he's not a free agent for two years there was laker rumors for every single superstar russell westbrook and kevin love were supposed to team back up yeah go, in la like UCLA four connection. years ago you know what i'm saying so yeah still waiting for that to happen yeah i'm still waiting for kevin love to speaking find a of new kevin team. love i i <laughs> Was thinking about that today. Free Kevin Love. He signed a big contract in Cleveland. Uh, it's not too big to trade. Yeah, it's very movable. But it was, uh, you know, it was a big contract at the, uh, last summer. Uh, he has to get out of Cleveland. And why have we not heard any movement for Kevin Love? I, I think because the biggest problem is, one, his, his value took a hit. LeBron, yes, LeBron brought him a ring, but LeBron did diminish his career there's no way around that he played a way different position than, than what he was great at in this, minnesota yeah this guy i mean shooting was an extra touch for him he was a beast down low he's a fantastic rebounder you never got to see that in cleveland because he's far away from the yeah. basket at all times he couldn't work from the high post because you can't have somebody work from the high post with LeBron there. He wasn't getting those 20 rebound games that he was regularly in Minnesota. He was also a great facilitator, but he never got to he never got to flash a fraction of his potential there. So But I, but that's why I feel like I, I feel like if we know that sitting here oh, in a studio know. on Fremont Street, the NBA knows that. So that's why I'm I'm surprised I think, that more teams aren't going after I him. I think it's a trade deadline deal because I think teams just didn't know where people were going to land yeah. and now you're kind of you're settled for now. I guarantee you at the trade deadline, unless something pops up before, he has to be on a playoff moved. team. He's oh, he's getting moved to a playoff team. He has it's just to be. because he he does he brings too much to the table. And looking at the rosters right now, where could you see him going? Oof. I always think Boston would be a good team with them losing Horford. But I just don't know what Boston they have. Boston would be a good spot, but the question would the be the money wise and what well, do they have to and, trade and how much you're willing to give up. It would have to you'd probably have to give up like a Jalen Brown and the Memphis pick next year. That that would be the I that's, would say the baseline. I would say that's the baseline yeah. of the deal. Um, and he's coming off an injury. I mean, he sat out all year. I don't think it was a year long injury. No, he they made they it a year long injury because 
Kevin Love is good enough to win you some games that you sh- you don't want to be yeah. winning in their situation right Especially now. Especially when you're trying for Zion. Yeah, well, which didn't work. Didn't work at all for but anybody. I, I still think... Which I'm glad it didn't work because I think that's going to change tanking forever you're, in the You're going to hear all the usual suspects come up for him. I mean, the, the Lakers have nothing to deal. No. So they'll still get brought up because they're oh, the Lakers. Course. They have nothing to deal. Uh, the Clippers might have some things to deal. Possibly. They, they've still got... They don't they have many got, draft picks for the no, next they don't 10 have years. The, see, that's the problem. Is I don't think that could happen because they don't have the draft picks. Um, and Houston when, when doesn't you're have draft to a young team, They want draft picks. Houston keeps figuring out stuff, though. I, I don't know how. And, 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 and Cream was complaining about this. Like, how does Golden State keep getting people? Blah, blah, blah. It's like Houston does, too. I don't know how Houston makes these moves all the time. But they keep what about, getting people. Think about him in Milwaukee. Milwaukee would be nice. With Giannis. Milwaukee would be nice. But then again, what do they really have to trade? They don't have a whole bunch either. They don't have a whole but bunch, could... but they, they they haven't given up all their picks for years yeah, and years exactly. either. So, I mean, that's 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 the commodity that I think. But that needs would be more. a nice nice team for him to land on. Yeah, I think they're going to look for a young player. They just got Corver. They just signed Kyle Corver, which I you know he's Corver's good. He's washed. good for fifteen minutes. I, hit a couple threes. I I think fifteen Can't minutes is more than he at all. I I I I'll do respect to Kyle Corver. Great shooter. Uh, earned all this time in the league. He's he's way past it. Yeah, I think you could see by the fact that he didn't, LeBron didn't take him with him to L.A. for that for yeah. a little bit of money. Tells you that Kyle Korver is probably all set. And same thing with J.R. Smith. I know Minnesota. I mean, uh, <laughs> Milwaukee was talking to him. I, why I'm would not LeBron sure. ask for that again? Well, I don't think LeBron did. I'm I, no, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, why would he? Yeah. What, LeBron uh, has has had that experience. LeBron also got him paid. Definitely. I feel like LeBron James has done enough for that man. Yeah, he owes him nothing. <laughs> I personally don't see J.R. Smith in the NBA anymore. I mean, I'm sure he might get on a team, but... I can see him back in China. Can you see him on any contenders? In the big three? Wow. He'd light it up in the big three. I'll tell you that right now. He would. I, he'd, Joe Johnson. he'd actually be fun to watch in the big Joe three. Joe Johnson is the greatest player in the history of the, <laughs> in the big three. He's balling. Have you been watching that at all? I've, yeah, I've been, I've been catching a little bit of it. But yeah, Joe Johnson is... Joe Johnson was built for the big three. Yeah. Uh, Lamar Odom was not. No. Oh, That's and, a cautionary And three people tale. Got, got kicked out. Well, what was the wording they used? Uh, terminated for the year or... I don't know. I think they well, tried contracts to say were nicer. terminated. Contracts were terminated. <laughs> yeah, the contracts were uh, were uh, done. Whatever they said, but it was Lamar Odom, and it was two people that have been there from the beginning, which is Baron Davis and uh, Jermaine O'Neal. Well, but if you look at that league now, yeah, you get some, you got some old, out of shape guys still. But man, a lot of those guys out there. I mean, Amari Stoudemire is trying to make an NBA comeback. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, you have old guys like Katina Mobley and Mahmoud Abdul Rauf. But Mahmoud Listen, Abdul-Rauf man, I love watching Mahmoud. I'm sorry, you're 50 so, years old, shooting lights out still. Mahmoud will be shooting from his grave. Yeah, you know that's. But I mean, that's a a freakish level shooter. Same with Lamar Odom. Oh, it's that Kardashian curse, man. Shouldn't have got mixed up with that family. Listen, I mean, he was. Trust me, he uh, was yes, doing drugs way the, before yes, Kardashians had other, were Yes, he's popular. had other problems. Uh, man, I I was sad to see him go because I really wanted to see him. First you of all, I love watching good, him play. You wanted it to be a good story. Lamar Odom was. You want to see a good account- ending, and and you just keep thinking like this. He's still young, and in the back of your head, you're like, this still won't end well. By all accounts, Lamar Odom is a good guy that has had a lot of bad things happen to him in life, battling demons, battling and, uh, a lot of death in his life. Yeah, and, and, and it's it's just you wanted it. You wanted him to be successful. Just because you want him to be successful, but you know, unfortunately, he—if this was like the beginning of the big three, Lamar Odom would have been there the whole year. Yeah, but it's—it's it's gotten rapidly better. I mean, the quality of players you're getting in there now, you're getting guys that are a lot fresher. Like, I feel like Joe Johnson could still get some minutes in in the NBA. Yeah, he—he—he he, he seems way too overqualified for the big three right now. But I mean, he wouldn't. He, he wouldn't dominated. really fit in on on NBA rosters right now with the way the game's being played. But yeah, for the for the big three, he seems like he's got a little too much going on. 
but it is fun, man. If you guys haven't caught any of the big three, make sure you check it out. We're trying to get some interviews from some of the big three players. Jeez, Josh. Joshua Williams. Joshua. Uh, so, but we will have, uh, we, we're going to the Contender Series again tomorrow. Uh, there's going to be, you know, some new fighters that we've never seen before that we get to see fight tomorrow. Uh, we might even get some of the people. There, there was actually some really good fighters last week, the last two weeks. Uh, so I think every Monday we will have somebody from the Contender Series on. Uh, even if it's just a quick 10-minute interview, we'll we'll talk to somebody. Uh, we might try to get them in the studio. A lot of these guys live out of town, so they're flying in, flying back out the next right. day. We might do some Wednesday morning shows just to get them in the studio to do interviews. So, uh, you know, stay tuned for that as well uh, to fill up the summer. You know, like Dave was saying, there aren't a lot of sports going on. The good thing about boxing and, just and, ended. <laughs> oh, gosh. The good thing about boxing and, uh, and, and UFC, it's year-round. So you don't have to worry about that. We'll always have some combat sports for you. Um, Tiger did horrible. He did, but I, I think he's he's at a point in his career he, where he can't be playing all the time. He he basically said as much. He Physically, he, he wasn't there and, and ready to be back out there. Tiger's comeback already happened. And he wasn't the only guy that played really bad. No, those courses are, are weird. I mean, Kepka, who dominates majors, I mean, if you went by his... By, like, getting to the getting to the green... Kepka dominated that tournament. Yeah. If you went by hitting putts, that, that's why Kepka did not win that tournament. And you had an unknown just come out of nowhere and blitz everybody. And shout out to the unknowns. I, I love when that happens. It, if, it, it wasn't if Tiger's close. not winning, I want an unknown to win. Yes, Tiger's my favorite golfer. Yeah, that, you know, there's some of those guys that, that, I, that I, I like seeing them win. Like, I, I, I thought Spieth was really going to make things happen there for a little while. That seems to have fallen off. I like, but I like, I like a good story. Yeah. You know, if it's, if it's not your absolute best guy, it seems like in majors, Kepka is like the best guy. And he, he, he's figured out what like average viewers have figured out. He only cares about majors. Yeah. and really could care less about every other tournament. Yeah. It's like, guess what? You, you keep going that way. You'll be considered one of the greatest players of all time. <laughs> all right. Anything else, Dave? What, what else we got? Is that it? Man, you know, I mean, we actually football stuff did a lot up. for. Oh yeah, football. Listen, man, I'm super excited about football coming up. And 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 I was talking about this. I think I was talking about it Saturday uh, with the fellas on Let the Ball Bounce every Saturday, two p.m. Um, the fact that basketball lasts so long now, and in the off season is so heavy with NBA that the NFL is just creeping up. I mean, we're like two, three weeks away well, from the because, Hall of Fame game. Because you have less stars than ever, because they make it more about teams. I mean, you, they're trying to make big news about Odell Beckham being upset at the Giants. That's not really big news. And, and you know what pisses me off about, or makes me mad about that is the fact that they're bringing this up. Should Odell be tired? This, this was in May that he said that. Yeah, This was an interview for May, and they've been the holding on to it. this. Exactly. They've been holding on to this. For because slow it wouldn't sports have mattered. Day. It wouldn't have mattered. This is the perfect week to release this. There's nothing going on. You're, You're not in the stretch Odell. run of baseball yet. Odell was asked that question pretty much a month after he was traded. Right. So, of course, he's going to give that answer. Yeah, he's it's a, a fair he's answer. Moved he's moved on. Uh, he's fine. You know, some of his statements in that answer were inaccurate. Saying we only got on national TV because of me, well, that's which you're not you're there the anymore. They have three games. Yeah, you're it's the Giants. You're playing the Cowboys twice. Correct. You're the Giants. The Giants. I, NFC East is always getting on TV. Always. I mean, the Giants and Cowboys. It, it, if you or I were on the team, are getting national TV games. You're getting a, a does not matter. You're getting a Sunday night game for sure. Cowboys and Giants every that's, year. That's just receiver mentality, though. Receiver yeah. mentality is just like that. You know, it's. Hey, it's better than having to see ESPN and everybody else play these guys' workout videos. Yeah. I don't care about your workout. And then I did, know you guys are in great shape. I I, kind of, I like the workout videos. <laughs> I know I, you're all in great shape. Did, did you see the Antonio Brown one with the with the brick? Yes, where he's where he's wearing like backless loafers. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I did see that. Listen, I mean, yes, he's a freak. We look at it, it, we're like, okay, cool. I want to attempt that. I think we're going to bring a brick in next week. We're all going to try that. Because he had to, he had to slap the dude's hand behind him and catch the brick with the other hand. That's how many, what he was doing. How many consecutively do you think you could do? Zero. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I, it's gonna be a small break. Am I? Well, you get one. I might get one. I mean, you're holding. You it. get the initial one. <laughs> you <laughs> get the one you're holding already. Uh, oh, I I I know my coordination level. My chances of accomplishing this are like zero point zero. 
I think I, where's Steve? Listen, for this? We, we might do a this contest. is where we need Steve. If in you here. can get five, we're gonna buy you dinner. If somebody can get five, See, if somebody can come to the studio, I need Steve up next here for Monday. this so badly because you know Steve is going to be convinced. You know what I that he's going to be uh, able definitely. to do it like Antonio he th- Brown. He thinks he makes more money than Manny, no, Manny easy, Pacquiao. Uh, so to make more money, have more money. <laughs> oh Listen, man. man! Listen, if if, if you're worth five hundred million and you lose. 400. 499 <laughs> million of that, you're still a yeah, you got more money than me. You still got more money than yeah. me. Yeah. So listen, the, the thing that would happen with Steve, I know this would happen. Uh Steve would do the brick. He'd catch it with one hand. He'd try it again. It would fall on the bad foot. Oh, oh Lord. I didn't even I didn't even take that into the equation. It would break his foot again and he'd be out a whole other year. Look at y'all done to me. He'd blame us. 100 percent he would get high more often and bla- say it's our fault. <laughs> well, see, now I have to get high. See, doctor's now, orders. Doctor's orders. It would be all bad. Oh, my Lord. You know, I actually do have one other football thing to comment on because of the, the dumbest non-story to try to make a controversy thing. When when they went out... I, listen, Jim Harbaugh says plenty of stupid stuff. As a Michigan fan, I could admit this. His record against Ohio State is the worst it could possibly be because he hasn't won. Yeah. But his whole thing about where he talked about Urban Meyer, everything he said was facts. And his response was like, yeah, he leaves and there's allegations and controversy and then he moves on and he'll pop up someplace else. And then when he said, after he said these, like, I didn't realize that, I don't remember the exact words, like, I didn't, nothing that I said was like groundbreaking or news. Yeah. It's the truth. It's something everybody knows. It's just stating facts. Yes. And everybody will happily take Urban Meyer because like, well, you know, I'll probably get a ch- I'll probably get a title in. You'll get a title. You'll get controversy. I get a title. I'll you get don't the mind sanctions that. after the title. That's okay. Yeah, I'll you don't mind that. that. And USC is used to that. Yeah. Uh, and and you know that's kind of the rumor now. Well, I also love how fake Urban Meyer is though, because it's always I remember before it's like you know when he left Florida to dodge <laughs> sanctions. Uh, uh, you know, I I I I just really need to spend more time he's with a, my he's with, a pro with, with my family. Which, by the way, by the next season he was on ESPN every week for their pregames and and doing other stuff in Bristol. And the year after that, he was at Ohio State. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, oh, man, that he, family. You must have got all that family t- yeah. time in that you needed. You get a whole year for your family. Yeah. Uh, strange well, not even a whole the, year. Strange with all the allegations. It's all the upstanding citizens that are on that team. Everybody points to Tim Tebow, but, you know, the Pounceys, Aaron <laughs> Hernandez. How's Aaron Hernandez? Oh, oh not that, uh, didn't, that didn't go well. Uh, Steve said... Brick challenge on deck, son. I knew it. I knew if we, I knew we could speak this <laughs> it into so existence. It, listen, it's so easy to get Steve to do anything. I don't care how easy anything. it was, but I knew it was going to happen. Do you think Josh would do it? <sighs> He's kind of a pretty boy. I'm not sure if he'll d- yeah, do it. Yeah, Josh a brick. isn't tough enough to do that. I think he would hurt his hands do by brick. holding the brick. Yeah. I don't think Josh could handle it. I'm pretty sure it. he you know, has soft I take soft that hands. back. Josh can't handle it. I'm pretty sure he has pretty soft hands. <laughs> yeah. Josh can't handle it. Yeah, uh, cream would do it. You would have to bring a substance for him. Yeah, well, you'd have to bring a bottle. Be worthwhile. Bring some bottle service to him. Uh, I will attempt it. I'm, I'm telling you right now, I might I be would able only to, attempt it if everyone else. I might does be it. able to <laughs> drop and grab the brick one time, and I promise you, I'm going to try it before we do it live on air. So, well, I'm just thinking of well, dropping the grabbing the brick, but then there's the whole like you have to make the connection. Yeah. In the back, that's the other thing. It's like I don't even know if I could have been the other two to make, keep it up with the coordination to make sure I have my hands in the right spot for him to slap him. Yeah, exactly. I'm not sure if I could do that. That's sad. Yeah, I don't know. But we're gonna. There's try a lot it. of reasons I'm not a professional brick challenge athlete. next week. Brick challenge next week. Actually, you were a professional athlete this week. I'm not sure if you saw your basketball card. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw it. Thanks. DP three. I know Thanks. you didn't talk to me for a while after I made it. <laughs> I hate you so much. So when you said that in the group, uh, Dave cussed me out in the group when I said something about CP3 and his favorite player, uh, about getting a jersey or something. So Dave cussed me out, and I said, man, that's the wrong time Accurate. for you to tell me that. I was in front of Photoshop <laughs> yeah. already doing a flyer. Yeah, I didn't realize why it was the wrong time. And, then I found and you, out and Cream, you and Cream were both like wondering why it was the wrong time. Okay, like, is he in a bad mood? Did, my bad? Like, do I have to apologize? I was like, I can't believe this is the time of all the things I've said that finally pushed you over the edge. Yeah. I've said far worse. <laughs> You're like, is he kicking us out of the group? Is the yeah. show done? And But the wrong time was I had Photoshop <laughs> open. I was literally working on another flyer. Uh, 
the worst part is the head is gigantic on the <laughs> too. It's like it's like if my actual head was put on CP3's actual body, his five foot ten body. Oh man, I'm sorry, but I was impressed with my Photoshop job of that. I do DP3. like those uniforms though. So DP3. So you oh, might Lord. get a Chris Paul jersey. No, no. Listen, you might end up falling in love with Chris Paul. Um. I will be happy if he helps shepherd the young guys. Especially brings, Alexander. Bring, yeah, brings effort. I just don't want him to get in Alexander's way. I just want him to bring effort and intensity every night. I know he's hard to play with. Everybody knows that. But that's a that's a young team already. Before you even get to the draft picks, that's a young team. So the problem is if, so veterans, he bring a lot. if he's hard to play with with veterans, how is he going to help the young guys? I but don't see, the see thing it. is, the thing is, I think some of that is because some of the veterans are like, there's some guys out there that are like, oh, we don't need to listen to you. It's like, you're DeAndre Jordan. You do need to listen to him. Yeah. Because he's making your career. He made you so much money. Now, if you're Blake, Blake has a lot of talents. And, and, and there Blake are times... was doing the stuff with and, Baron Davis. Exactly. And, and also, Blake, when Chris Paul would annually be hurt, Blake produced and the offense was running through him. So for him, Chris Paul being there yeah. wasn't outrageously necessary. And then it's then it just turns into like, Oh, I just have to listen to you all the time, and we don't win anything yep. because of it. Great. Where do I <laughs> sign up for that? Yeah, that's why when I saw when they were first talking about trading Chris Paul, one of the th- places they brought up was Detroit. I was like, there is a zero point zero percent chance that Blake Griffin would yeah. would <laughs> take any part in that. Blake Griffin would be like, I'll be out by injury for life, <laughs> for all of life. I wouldn't have minded seeing a uh, Russell Westbrook go go to Detroit and play with them. I, th- I think that would have been fun to watch those, those well, guys. I knew that was going to happen because one, they weren't taking back Andre Drummond and two, they certainly weren't taking back Reggie Jackson. They not had at all. Yeah, They'll never. Yeah. They, I saw that and I was like, who are they sending? Yeah. Not yeah. that. None of that's happening. Yeah. Reggie not Jackson, either one. Reggie Jackson didn't say much, many nice things uh, about all them either. No, uh, Reggie Jackson, Reggie Jackson. He thought he should, should have been the starter. Yeah. Well, how's that going? Over uh, he has been. Yeah, you were great. I hate that. You're a great six man. You you were great in your role. He was a good six man. Had a great playoff game. And listen, one. I I promise the new Reggie Jackson that we're gonna see this year is a scary player in Charlotte. Well, Terry Rozier. <laughs> I th- I think you're gonna see the same scary thing. Terry. These guys that had an opportunity, overachieved in their role. They want a bigger role. I, I, I mean, I think Terry he's better. done more than he's Reggie better. Jackson. He's better than Reggie Jackson, but it's that same type of feel where it's like, okay, now you have your own team. What are you going to do with it? Well, look at that game seven where he just kept shooting with Terry Rozier. I think we already know. Yeah. Take that game seven where and he kind of helped cost them that game. Duplicate that by eighty two and, and make, times that by eighty two. Because <laughs> after now he's got paid, so you're not telling yeah. Terry Rozier anything anymore. Oh man. Gosh, so many guys got paid. So many guys. We focus on like the maxes and things like that, but man. Yeah, a lot of people got paid. That's a lot of money for, a, that's a lot of Terry Rozier in your life. For people that don't pay attention to the NBA that much, that might only watch during the season a little bit, in the playoffs, when you turn your TV on October 22nd and you see that every single team that's on TV has a totally different roster, you're going to be shocked. Because we're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do a recap. I can't remember who's where. The only that's why I think that Denver, like teams like Denver, that added to a super strong roster, Utah. A lot of it. I mean, Utah's got some changes, but their changes I think help them do nothing but help them. There's so many changes in continuity. I, I, that's why a lot of people thought maybe Houston should have tried to run it back. I thought they should have, but that's why I think the behind the scenes was way worse. Has then to Harden been. and Chris Paul are saying, I think they respect each other. Uh, I don't think Harden ever said anything against it. It was like no, Chris no, Paul I'm, and Daryl Morey. No, I'm Morgan. saying what they're saying now. No, right. Harden did say uh, something this weekend about Chris Paul. Oh, now, now. But what I was saying, it was but like... during oh, the time, though. But yeah, like during the whole part with the time, I was like, I don't remember Harden ever coming out and saying it, it wasn't Yeah, bad. he didn't say anything until Chris Paul was traded. Yeah. But, uh, and, so, I mean, and, that's, that's still respect. At least him, they're not dogging each other in the public. Him and Russ are friends. So, yeah. I mean... If if anybody's gonna figure it out in a situation where it does, I'm not sure how you figure it out. I mean, I guess the only way the only way you can figure it out is you have to James Harden has to play off the ball. Listen, it's gonna be entertaining one way or another. 
So you oh, think no, it'll they're be gonna a disaster. Have some... It's gonna be just fun to watch. It's it's gonna be both. They're gonna have some nights with the two of them going. And, and I'm gonna tell you right now, they're not gonna get along all the time. There's gonna be. I, I think we'll see yelling at each other on the court. But, I think it'll be respectful. Yeah. The thing is, I think it's that's more so like in a good way, like because that's just like two friends that do have some similarities and some difference. And some of that's gonna happen. They see each other more as peers, whereas Chris Paul is always talking to you like you don't know anything. Yeah. You could you could tell from a distance and never having played with him. That Chris Paul talks to everyone like they're like they're stupid. I'm sure we. You probably know people like that in real life. I know I do. I've, I've does. dealt with people, especially dealing with, uh, you know, hip hop artists and, and music and stuff like that. You you deal with those narcissists that think they're the smartest person in the room. I don't think Chris Paul thinks Chris Paul has ever been wrong. No, and that's always a problem. If, he if thought he think, was wrong once, but if he was you mistaken. think you're the smartest person in the room all the time, or always have to be, or always have to have the last word, or always have to give the smartest word. Come on. But some of that's probably how he got to be as great of a player as he, as he is. Because he parts of they it, say I think. six they say I, six foot. No chance. Th- that's fine, <laughs> but at the same time, you take some of that away. Aren't you greater? H- don't you go farther in the or NBA maybe, than, than you have? Or maybe you never got there because you didn't have that thing that was pushing you. But I think nonstop. when you get to a certain point in your NBA career, like yeah, that got you to the NBA, but now you're with everybody that got there like that. Don't you have to kind of step back and, and there's a reason why his he has career a one in the you, NBA. His career would tell you yes. I, I I would personally say, but I mean, he's made a ton of money. He's going to go down. As, he's a definite Hall of Famer. I mean, yeah, there's, sure. there's he should have an MVP. <laughs> he, I mean, he, he, he was a great player, but he just didn't achieve what, you know, he probably... Should have and maybe could have. He didn't, he didn't I, max, I feel like the Clippers could have maxed out his. But he didn't max out his potential. Well, yeah. if he could have learned to get along with people a little bit better, I think it would have made that team. Yeah, better. that's what I'm saying. That, that's why I think he would have got farther uh, if you could have changed some of that and you know been more of a, a leader and not just you know talking down down yeah. to people. I mean, one of the toughest parts for him is one of the is the best moment of his career was a game seven game winner in the first round against the Spurs. Yeah, right, and that was a fantastic shot. It was huge, and it was the first well, round. It's a great team. I mean, that was no question. But yeah, but it was the first round. First round. So that's that doesn't help you. That's your claim to fame for like a career retrospective. But I mean, hey, there's still people that think he's like the greatest point guard that ever walked the earth. And then most of your highlights are uh, grabbing your hamstring, so or Steph Curry crossing you up horribly, <laughs> multiple times. Who you foul on every possession. Which, by the way, is super smart. I will give him that. It's a great defensive strategy. If you just foul all the time. And you know that crossover he had, and that, that was probably five or six years ago now. At least. Like, it, it, it went viral, but I don't think memes and, and gifs were near as big no, back then. No, not like then. now. Oh. If, if that would have happened now. Because that wasn't I'm like sorry, the that, was... that wasn't like the one that uh, James Harden put on. Who was it? Wesley Johnson. Wesley Johnson. That I think ended Wesley Johnson's NBA career. I haven't seen him since. <laughs> we we got to find. I haven't seen. Him we got to find Wesley Johnson out there. Where are you, Wes? He just laughed like Wesley Johnson was on, on the floor laughing. Well, what like, are you gonna okay, do? I'm done. I, I, there's nothing. <laughs> the worst part. The worst part of that whole thing was when Harden stopped, looked at him, and then still drilled the three. Yeah. That 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 has to be tough for a, a professional basketball player to take. Like, I mean, if that happened, if that would have happened to me in a pickup game, <laughs> I I would have I could have never gone oh, back to the leave. gym. Yeah, you don't. Go, I, you I don't couldn't go be seen there gym. again. No, you go play somewhere else. Yeah, I got to find a new place to play, yeah. guys. Sorry, yep. <laughs> I'm retired. Or you got to shave. You got to. You got to. Oh gotta no, change. that's not enough. You got to change enough. your whole look. It's not enough. They would know. I'd have to look like dude from Soul Man. <laughs> oh gosh. All right, well, we are out. Uh, tune in every Monday, 4 p.m. West Coast time. I'm sure we'll start a Thursday show once uh, football kicks back in. Uh, but I am excited about football season, so we will be talking about that soon and uh, giving you our predictions on that uh, in a couple weeks. Uh, tune in to Dana White's Contender Series every Tuesday, uh, 5 p.m. West Coast time on ESPN+. Plus. It's been fun, man. Uh, there's a lot of good, good fights happening, a lot of... Uh, Things you could still watch during the summer. You know what I'm saying? If you're not a big baseball fan, it's definitely, this is definitely the hardest month and a half 
of sports every Stop year. Stretch. Yeah. And this 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 week in particular is like there there really isn't anything. Yeah. Nothing going on. Yep. All right. So we are out. Uh tune in, follow us at Gorilla Cross on all social media. Download that app. See you next week. Mm-hmm.